Glad you're with us for America's Day at the Races. That's JC Shooting Star, the morning line favorite for our featured seventh. She's looking to return to her winning ways. She has three prior wins over this Belmont turf course. Now she's dropping out of stakes company. She'll have to run down a horse from the barn of turf specialist Christophe Clement. Factor of one also gets some class relief today looking for her second win of the year. And there's no relief from the heat in Kentucky. The September meet at Churchill Downs getting underway today where temperatures are in the mid 90s. America's Day at the Race is brought to you by America's Best Racing, the go-to site covering the sport and lifestyle. Visit americasbestracing.net today. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to beautiful Belmont Park on what is a fall feel in the air. We've got a great card for you today, not only from here, but Churchill Downs. I'm Anthony Pascal. We're glad you're with us. I'm joined by New York Racing Association handicapper Andy Serling. Andy, great to be here. Happy Friday the 13th. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad it's what it is here and not the 95 you said it is at Churchill Downs. <laughs> I'm a little worried about our co-worker Frank Lyons, who's at Churchill Downs in the heat. We'll be hearing from him in a little while. But I'm looking forward to discussing today's card with you and Greg Wolf a little bit later. Let's talk about today's card. Let's get right to the feature, the seventh race, which is Phillies and Mares, State Breads. A uh, couple of horses coming out of stakes races, including the favorite, JC's Shooting Star, installed as the 8-5 to five morning line favorite. Factor of one at 5-2, to two. part of the entry is scratched. I saw this field is wide open. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you, and I wonder if JC Shooting Star will be that big a favorite because she has no pace, whereas Factor of One figures to be sitting behind the speed in this race, and she may get the first jump and get the better trip. Now, JC Shooting Star, she's running second in the Dancing Renee on the dirt. This is a few starts back, and it shows that her recent form is pretty good. She's a better turf horse, and ultimately, she might be best sprinting on the turf, but will there be enough pace in this race, Anthony, for her to close? That is the upcoming seventh race. We are coming up on the third here at Belmont Park, just one minute to post. Let's take a look at the races that we'll be covering for you today here at Belmont. We're already up to the third. We have eight today here in New York. We'll also bring you the late pick three from Churchill Downs, races eight, nine, and ten, where they're also fast and firm. As we mentioned, it is a hot one. A short field here for the Belmont third. We have five horses after the three Bustin Stones scratched. And right now, the one nasty affair, the favorite, Andy coming off a win after a stumbled start at Saratoga. You and I are going to start out by agreeing on this show that Nasty Affair is way over better, current 8 to 5. I still think the two making out will be favored by the time the field leaves the gate. But Nasty Affair is taking a lot of money based on a visually impressive win in her maiden race, Saratoga. And it's a race we talked about quite a bit on the Saratoga Live show. She blew the brake. She dropped way out of the race and then made a huge run. And people see that and they get really excited. It's yeah. like, wow, look at that run. But the reality was it was a function of a couple of things. It was a very fast pace and it was a weak field. She's going to have to improve not just to beat making out if that one shows up, but also today comes once the six and the five, not about the nail. Let's talk about the two making out. Uh, the horse coming out of sprint races going a mile today, and some might ask, what happened in that last at Saratoga? She didn't run a step. She didn't, but she was down the inside, which wasn't the place to be, and then a little bit off later, and you really wanted to be outside that day, but also she was sort of shuffled out of the race in the early stages, and once that happened, she seemed to lose interest, and I just think it might have been a, a race off a layoff that she needed. Now, the board is saying she might need at least another race because she's somehow the second choice. But if she runs back to her races two and three back, albeit a year ago, she's going to win. I love horses like this five, not about the nail. An ultra consistent type always seems to try and a 10 time winner, but only once here at Belmont. I, I agree. You know, she's going to obviously face better horses at Belmont. She's faced other places, but she consistently runs speed figures fast enough to win here. And I think people view her as too cheap to win. So she's too good a price here. She's the kind of horse that you and I are going to fool around with. Johnny Velasquez takes the mount for Gary Contessa on the six. Hasn't run since March 31st. Let's go right to the third. Here's the voice of New York Racing, Larry Comas. They're all in line. They're off. Slow beginnings for Make It Out and Nasty Affair who break at the rear of the field as Love and Love goes out to the early lead. And now here comes Making Out rushing through on the inside after a tardy beginning. Not About the Nail is right up there too with Today Comes Once. Nasty Affair is the trailer and just four lengths behind and guided outside of horses. So up the backstretch they go. 
And the leader is Love and Love from Not About the Nail. Today comes once on the outside is third. Make it out in Nasty Affair closer now. Make it out two and a half lengths behind. Nasty Affair three lengths to make up. Outside of horses up the back stretch. That opening quarter mile, 23.39 seconds. They're in pursuit of Love and Love, who's the leader by just a neck. Not about the nail second. Today comes once as third. Nasty Affair is moving four wide and fourth while Make It Out will wait and sit on the inside and save ground on the turn, still going well in hand. Around the turn they go. Love and Love, Not About the Nail, 46.85 was this half mile. And right behind them is Make It Out, who needs a way through. Nasty Affair is going to take the overland route as they make their way toward the top of the stretch. Not about the nail on the outside of Love and Love. Make It Out's now going to come three wide after them. A four wide trip for Nasty Affair, who's got to get going. They're into the stretch, and Make It Out makes a move on the outside and takes over the lead. Make It Out to the front, drifting in there, but... In front as they come down to the 16th pole, then Not About the Nail, and then Nasty Affair on the outside, and Love and Love. Make it out. Another win for Manny Franco today. Make it out. Won it by a length and a half over Not About the Nail, then Nasty Affair and Love and Love. Manny Franco on absolute fire, winning the first three races here at Belmont Park, this time with Make it Out. Went off the favorite of three to two. Did it quite easily. Andy, the horse that we talked about, not about the nail, who seems to always put forth a good effort, hung on for second. No, I agree. Not about the nail, did run well in here. And it's a very good ride by Manny. And we saw Jose Lascano win the four, first four yesterday. And now Manny Franco is picking up where Jose left off to begin our card today. Make it out didn't break that sharply, as Larry Colmas alluded to. Worse for Nasty Affair, who we'll talk about in a moment. But Manny sat chilly. He got down on the inside, the best place to be. He hoped to get some room in the turn. He didn't get any room on the inside, so he waited, split horses, and went out. And making out one is the best horse, and ultimately, no surprise. Irad Ortiz got the one nasty affair to the outside part of the track. We know the inside part of the track has been the better place to be over the last week. I agree. I mean, you know, nasty affair, first of all, unsurprisingly, got left again. Yeah. Got left before, breaking from the inside, not going to break any better. And then Irad, in fairness to Irad, he hasn't been riding here. But he does need to know that the rail is the place to be. Now, I don't know where he's going to go with Nasty Affair anyway. So you can't really knock him at that point. You can't make that wide move, especially after getting left. But I think at the end of the day, what you and I alluded to, Nasty Affair ultimately may not have been good enough. We are going to take a quick break. We'll be back with the prices from the Belmont third. And then we'll take you to Louisville, Kentucky. Churchill Downs opening their September meet today. We have live on-site coverage from our Frank Lyons. He's there. We'll bring that to you right after this. Don't go anywhere. No problem. Run happy standing at Claiborne Farm. It's America's original sport, and no one covers it better than America's Best Racing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle, the best races, horses, and destination venues, cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. America's Best Racing.net is a sport for you. Live it. Love it. Bet it. Welcome back to America's Day at the races. Race number three in the books. And so far, all three races on the day have gone to jockey Manny Franco, who's standing by with me here in the winner's circle. Manny, are you sweeping the card today? I will try to do that. We got to win the many as we can. So. Making out, stretching out for the first time, gets the win in here for Bruce Levine. When you have a horse stretching out to go a little bit longer distances, does that change at all uh, your preparation coming into the race? Not really. I just try to let the horse do whatever he want to do, and I just try to make my move when the time comes, and that's what I do with, with this filly right here. She was, I got a lot of horse under me the whole, the whole way around, so I was waiting for the, for the moment, the right and they all seem to be bunched up a little bit as you were uh, coming around the turn. Tell me uh, as you swung around and, and what you had in front of you coming down to the wire. 
I mean, I, I could uh, push the horse in outside me a little bit, but uh, Ida was riding, so I said, let me wait a little, a little bit more because anyway, I, I'm gonna be able to go around. Hands out, that's what I did. And like I said, I got a lot of horse under me and she responded very well. Well, Manny, thanks so much. They obviously off to a great start for you. We'll be keeping an eye on you for the rest of the day. Thank you, Gracia. Anthony, three wins, three races. We'll see what the day has in store still for Jackie Manny Franco. Sure, thanks. He's riding with a lot of confidence and he's got some live mounts, Andy, going forward. No, I agree. He's got the favorite in this race, My Sassy Sarah. And looking at the races, he's got Case, the shooting star horse, JC shooting star in the feature, as well as at least one other very live mountain here. So he, he could easily win. I mean, it's not easy, but he could win a race two or three more today. He could have a huge day. Nice pick three there, payoff $86 for a dollar. That dollar exacta with making out and not about the nail got you back $8. We have a full field for the upcoming fourth race, rather that field of seven for the upcoming fourth, where Manny Franco will look to win his fourth race. Who did you see here? I thought it was a wide open race. I, I, I like the five stronger than you know, uh, coming in from out of town where he was running in stakes. I thought he would be very, she would be very dangerous in this field. I'm not thrilled with the horses coming out of the first race on August 23rd, though if I take a horse out of that race, I would take the two gens battle. And I'm a little dubious of Manny's horse, the seven, my sassy Sarah, but it's fairly wide open. Why is that? I don't love the fact that she got a perfect trip last time, came in the stretch, took the lead, looked like a winner, and not only got passed from behind, but she actually lost second place to the horse that was in front that she passed. So that bothers me a little bit. On the other hand, her trainer, Michelle Nevin, often takes her time with horses, so it wouldn't be surprising if she takes a big step forward. Horse that came second in that last race did come back to win. She won on, a, on an off-the-turf race on Friday, but you might be able to say that she was meant to run on the dirt, and she still, or in the turf, and she still ran very well in the dirt, so maybe it was a better race than I give it credit for. I always think it's hard for first-time starters to have to come from all the way in the back of the pack. Number three, Unicorn Sally broke last, but did show some life late. She did. I don't like her. I think she's got the kind of running line that sucks people in and says just what you're saying when reality, that was a race that featured a super fast pace that collapsed. We saw the favorite or co-favorite in today's second race had a similar running line and finished third. That horse did very little running. And I just think if you want a horse out of that race, you want a horse who was forwardly placed like the two Jens Battle. All right, let's talk uh, Churchill Downs. They have a great card of racing both today and tomorrow. Some good stakes races that we'll be looking forward to tomorrow. But it's a beautiful yet hot day at Churchill. The eighth race is coming up, a field of 10. And right now, the favorite is the one, Diamond Crazy at 5-2. to two. Frank Lyons joining us now live from Churchill Downs. And Frank, from what I've noticed early in the card, Speed is doing quite well today. Hi guys, welcome to Churchill Downs, opening day of this uh, short meet here. It's a very hot and humid day, and as you can tell by the horse, the horses are all kind of washing out. They're remaining fairly calm. We've got three races, the 8th, the ninth, and the 10th, already seven in the book. Track is fast and it's firm. I'm going to be in the paddock trying to learn something about these horses. They're getting up aboard to go out for the post parade for this 8th race, and the favorite is 5-2 to two right now. That's the one horse we'll be right back to you guys frank lyons at churchill downs frank lyons thanks so much for that churchill has some good races today tomorrow andy some stakes races especially for the two-year-olds dale roman says he has one of the best horses he's ever trained running tomorrow in dennis's moment i wish i had a dollar for every time either dale or his son jake told me they had a horse in their barn that was a freak. How did On I know that head, was coming? <laughs> they might be right in this case with Dennis's moment. That's a very exciting horse. And I think there's some great racing all around the country and North, I say North America. Woodbine will be covering from up there as yep. well. But that horse, Dennis's moment, don't miss the show tomorrow. Don't miss Dennis's moment. Horse won his first race by 19 lengths at Ellis Park. There were some well-meant horses behind him that day as well. But let's talk now about this eighth that's coming up at Churchill Downs. The horse taking a lot of the money is trainer Dallas Stewart's number one, Diamond Crazy. Yeah, it's funny. It's almost like they see a race at Saratoga and see the horse ran second and say, well, Saratoga, the horse might be good here. Now, that could be the case. I really think it depends how much pace there is, and I'm not sure how strong the pace is going to be because she is a bit of a closer. I think she ran okay last time out, but 
wasn't she just sort of picking up pieces when the race was falling apart at the end? I was watching some of the earlier races from Churchill today, and it definitely seemed like you wanted to be on or near the lead, especially on the inside. Not many horses making up a ton of ground in the stretch. We saw some of that when we were watching their races over the spring and summer yeah. meet, so I'm not surprised to hear you say that. And I think the horses that are interesting in here, at least a couple of them, maybe all of them can be forwardly placed because outside of the one, isn't the theme kind of horses coming off of decent maiden wins and layoffs because you've got the five in the midst of a biz mm -hmm. who hasn't run since since day after Christmas at fairgrounds, broke her maiden first time out. She's coming off a long layoff, and the seventh summer delivery been off for six months off a maiden win. It says two minutes to post. I don't think they're going to go to post in two minutes. Look like they just did a shoe repair on the nine horse. That's JD's girl for Greg Foley. So this race may be delayed just a little bit, but we will be bringing it to you. That five in the midst of biz hasn't run since December 26, but she did win. Yeah, I mean, she got the job done, and she ran a reasonably credible race for good operation. Wayne Cattle on the trainer. We'll see if he can get this horse off a layoff. I'm not going to be surprised when she's forwardly placed and very effective. I mean, is she the speed, or is the three Shyla Baby the speed? I think sometimes when a horse comes off the turf or the synthetic surface back onto dirt, it could help them a bit. I thought this was an interesting horse. Yeah, no, I agree. She, I, I tell you what, if you want to take a horse that's a price, and just go on the angle that, first of all, she's good enough off her race two back off the turf. Yep. But also, she could well be in front of this field, and she's a big price. And she has a win over the track. She's one for two at Churchill Downs. Tough connections on the eight. Vamba trainer Al Stahl wins at a high percentage. And Julian Leperu really uh, rides well at Churchill. And this horse lost all chance at the start, and then was just had one of those nightmare trips. Because you got a speed horse and you get left. In most cases, the race is over for you because you're going to encounter trouble trying to get position, and that's exactly what happened to Vamba. And you take the last race out, it's arguable she'd be the favorite. The only concern is her big win was in the sloppy off the turf race at 1-2. to two. Corey Lannery has a couple wins on the Churchill Downs card today. He's riding the seven summer delivery. Just a knock against this horse is we haven't seen her. We haven't seen her since March 9th at Oaklawn. No, I agree. She's, she's, she's in some ways very similar by a few months to the number eight, five horse in this race, and that she has the decent maiden win, but now she's coming off a layoff. But I will say, her last race, good enough to win here. And if you look two back, she lost to Lady Apple, who was a stakes caliber horse. Um, yeah, we saw Lady Apple win the, Apple, uh, the, um, the prep for the Kentucky Oaks. I was there, fantasy. Pretty Field horse. making its way to the track for the eighth at Churchill Downs. A 10 race card in Louisville today as they get on the track for the post parade. I'm just glad that my friend Travis Stone has to work a little bit. <laughs> for the next few weeks until they start at Keeble. <laughs> right, and he can go back to being lazy. <laughs> Hanging out with me in Saratoga. <laughs> Here's the post parade. That's your favorite right now. Diamond Crazy. Trainer Dallas Stewart, ridden today by Tyler Gaffalione. It'll be interesting to see if this horse is favored by post time. We'll need some pace to close into. Brett Calhoun sends out the two rum and dice for Miguel Mena. Looks in a little tough after breaking her maiden against maiden claimers last out. Coming in from a race in Chicago at Arlington is the three Shyla Baby for Jimmy DeVito. Tyler Bay's on board. Her best race was off the turf at five furlongs on the dirt. Can she do it at six? But she could be the controlling speed. Calvin Burrell knows his way around the Churchill Downs Oval quite well. Matt Abair is the trainer on the four. Spice it up. He'll need all of his magic to get Spice It Up at 32 to 1. I bet you he'll be on the circle. rail, though. <laughs> Number five is in the midst of biz. Trainer Wayne Catalano with Channing Hill on board. If Channing Hill can find a way to clear the three Shiloh baby, this horse could be on her way. Here is Jose Ortiz coming off that hot Kentucky Downs meet for trainer Michael Maker, where they paired together for so many wins. Rides a lot of good horse for Mike Maker, so occasionally rides horses like Love My Honey. Seven is Summer Delivery. Corey Lannery, another Churchill Downs specialist. Oh, broker maiden last time out, but that was over six months ago. So too is Julian Leperu on the eight Vamba for trainer Al Stahl. Legitimate excuses in her last start. Her prior two give her more than a good chance. Another horse that may be sent early is the nine, J.D.'s girl for trainer Greg Foley and Gabriel Saez. Feels like she's on the chase on the outside and maybe a little slow. Certainly considering the outside part of the track has not been the place to be today. Rounding out this field of 10 is the 10 sworn silence. Trainer Michael Tomlinson for Brian Hernandez. To be fair, this horse is he, this horse is one of the few multiple winners in the field, having run in claiming races. And her best races aren't impossible, but 
as we've been talking about, you have to work out trips for these horses if you think the track is kind inside speed, and she is not that kind of horse. All right, so a competitive race right now, a very good betting opportunity right now. The one who was uh, five to two before has drifted up to three to one. The other is taking some money, include the seven and the eight. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised to see the seven and eight taking money in here. Vamba would be where I would go if I was going to take a shot. Four to one, probably fairish to me. I think the winner may come from the five in the midst of biz, the seven summer delivery, and the eight Vamba. To me, they're the likeliest winners here. I'd be somewhat against Diamond Crazy. One of the things that I always worry about on days where we have what appears to be a speed bias is that everyone then tries to go to the lead, and then all of a sudden you have four or five horses in a, in a scramble, and that sets it up for a close. Yeah, you know, it's funny. We would see that sometimes on the inner track at Aqueduct in the winter, which I know you're familiar with playing, and we used to sometimes have those big inside biases. Yeah. And it's like almost everybody's trying to thread the same needle, <laughs> and they can't all get to the rail, and what ends up happening in those situations is the pace is too fast, a bunch of horses are chasing, and somebody comes from the clouds to win the race. You're looking at a live picture from here at Belmont Park where it is just a gorgeous day in Elmont, New York. But going back out to steamy Churchill Downs where Frank Lyons told us it is absolutely unbearable. He said it's hot and humid, almost 95 degrees. Frank, how are you holding up out there? Oh, don't keep reminding me of the heat. It's too much. Uh, Diamond Crazy is your current favorite. He's five to one on the morning line, but he's sitting now down to two to one, or she is down to two to one. A daughter of Tail of a Caddy for Dallas Sturt. He saddled her towards the end of the uh, the paddock. She was getting a little warm, but as all the horses were, I kind of liked the five horse in here. That is. L Oh, no, the six horse, Love My Honey, owned by Three Diamonds Farm, Jesus Luis Ortiz aboard. I like that horse, one first time out. Then was only four to one in the group two Pocahontas, which has been run tomorrow. And then I also like the top pick would be the seven, Summer Delivery. This will finish second to Lady Apple, two starts back. Lady Apple finished third in the Kentucky Oaks. She won the Fantasy down at Oakland Park. She's a very good curling filly of Steve Asmussen's. Phil Sims sends out Summer Delivery. That's where I'll go the seven and also then you might notice that the 10 horse is the only four-year-old in the field four-year-old going against three-year-old she just cost a thousand dollars she loves churchill downs with three wins here and two placings from like seven starts in the past so the 10 horse costs just a thousand dollars at auction sworn silence i'll give her a little bit of a chance but i like summer delivery the seven all right frank lyons thanks so much try to stay cool out there Love My Honey, the six, comes out of Stakes Company, Andy, but he's lost by 22 lengths, 16 lengths, and before that, 21 lengths. I think the heat is getting to Frank early. <laughs> I've made him a slight underdog to make it to the 10th race. <laughs> well, you should know that it's beautiful here on this Friday the 13th. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry Frank's not here. One of my favorite people. He may melt in that heat, though. Just a couple more to load for the eighth at Churchill Downs. Allowance types going six furlongs. Let's go out to Travis Stone. They're in the gate. And they're off. Vamba on the far outside of the midst of Biz as their Shyla Baby hustled hard for that inside post, races out and gets over to the inside and leads the way onto the main track. So it is Shyla Baby in front in the midst of Biz running in second. Vamba's third. Raman Dice is racing fourth. Summer Delivery on the far outside is fifth. Sworn Silence up into sixth. Diamond Crazy is now seventh. JD's Girl Midpack running along in eighth. Five lengths off the lead. Let it spice it up second to last early. And at the back is Love My Honey. Ten lengths behind pacemaking Shyla Baby who skittered clear by two with three and a half for longs to go. Opening quarters on the board in 21 and one. In the midst of Biz coming with a two wide bid. Vamba three wide round the far turn right there though. Just a length behind with two and a half for longs left. Summer deliveries winding up from fourth. The rest have to get going. They're at the top of the stretch. Shyla Baby tries to cut the corner off the turn. Vamba to the attack. Here's Vamba on the outside. Rallied to the front in charge with one for long to go. Shyla Baby's back into second. Summer delivery is racing third. Spike it up is late on the scene with Diamond Crazy inside the final furlong. It's Vamba on a two length lead with 100 yards to go. Now it's two and a half. Shyla Baby battles on. Diamond Crazy late on the scene. Here's the wire. Vamba got it. Length and a half in the end. It's tight for second. Diamond Crazy or Shyla Baby. Summer delivery was fourth.
Julian Leperu on board Vamba take the lead at the top of the stretch and they did not look back. Great effort by the three, Shyla Baby who rode the rail throughout very close for second, the favorite, number one, Diamond Crazy, came running late. Yeah, boy, they were getting a little leg weary in the late stages here. Vamba made that winning move and looked home free. Got a little bit scary a little bit in the late stages as the closers were coming in, but carried her home. Al Stahl and showed her last race was a trip aberration. You talked about the racetrack, and you were dead right with Shiloh Baby. Took advantage of a racetrack very kind to her running style. Diamond Crazy is one to follow because she was against the track. Coming up the fourth here at Belmont Park, just nine minutes to post for this next contest. Manny Franco looking to sweep the card so far. He's on the seven. We'll see what happens. Uh, my Sassy Sarah is definitely a player in this race. We'll see if Manny Franco can do what Jose Lescano did yesterday in winning the first four races on the card. Quite a feat. The one is keep it. Tom Albatrani, Joey Martinez right there. There's the five, stronger than you know for Jose Lascano. A lot of more racing to come. The one keep it as Pat, her dam, won her turf debut sprinting. It is time for a break here on America's Day at the Races. Greg Wolf standing by. He'll take you along next. Eclipse champion Blaine was considered by many as the breakout stallion of 2018. His top runners included grade one winner and Eclipse Award finalist Marley's Freedom, plus grade one winner Fault, and graded stakes winners Marauder, Beyond Blaine, Miss Kentucky, and Blaine. This year, his two-year-olds have sold up to $700,000. Outstanding results, outstanding value. Blaine, standing at Cleveland Farm. Whether you have derby dreams or midsummer derby dreams, this is Tom Durkin to tell you a registered New York bred can take you there. Diversify. That New York bred exact and the Whitney by multimillionaires Diversify and Mind Your Biscuits shows the kind of quality that allowed New York breds to earn more than $93 million on the world stage last year. On track successes have spurred New York bred sales results. At the March OBS sale, Chestertown sold for $2 million. And this New York bred 2018 yearling brought a million at Saratoga. So get with the program at NY Breds. Each year, a new dream begins. To achieve that dream, you could never rest on past success. Audible, no doubt about it. He won it by two and a half. Yoshida storming home in the center. Yoshida, Yoshida has won the one word. Wake up, little one. It's time to dream big. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on every screen, every, screen. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. Use promo code TRYRTN for a five-day free trial. Next on America's Day at the Races, seven years old and still going strong. JC Shooting Star proves he still has what it takes to win. Earlier this year at Aqueduct, she looks for her first win since January. In today's seventh, factor of one makes just her second career appearance at Belmont Park in the exact and nearly half of her turf starts. She faces off with JC Shooting Star for the second time in eight weeks. And we'll have a preview of all the weekend stakes action at Churchill Downs as two-year-olds look to book their tickets to the Breeders' Cup in the Iroquois and Pocahontas. Welcome to America's Day at the Races, brought to you in part by America's Best Racing, the go-to site covering the sport and lifestyle. Visit americasbestracing.net today. Happy Friday the 13th, everyone. Beautiful Friday weather as we get set for a big weekend ahead. Not just coverage here, with the Pebbles this weekend at Belmont Park. Big stakes action at Churchill Downs and at Woodbine. We're gonna preview all of it. Coming up, as 
as we get set for what's going to be a tremendous few days of racing here. Greg Wolf alongside New York Racing Association handicapper Andy Serling. And our seventh race later on today, JC Shooting Star, morning line favorite in that race. I thought extremely beatable in that spot. I, I actually like her, but... I would have no problem with trying to beat her at the eight to five. I think I don't think she's going to be favored in this race. And I think the public will have the right problem with her, which is she's a dead closer or a deep closer, I should say, in a race where the pace is a little bit murky. So I can understand why some would have a problem with her chances. I like her. I think she's a true turf sprinter, but the race may set up poorly for her. Greg. Yeah. You know what's coming up next? Late. Pick five. Here I have a feeling go. you're involved. By the way, I just want to say <laughs> that was an impressive job by you getting into character. I mean, you didn't get into that seat until about 25 seconds before you came on. You're Thank like you. Superman. Thank you. I mean, seriously, you burst out of a phone booth. It, Ripped it was off a the sight cape. to be seen. <laughs> so late I'm pick I'm overwhelmed. Starts here at six furlongs inner turf. New York Breads in the maiden special weight and Jen's battle. Speed backed up first time on turf. Yeah, but that was a wicked fast pace and was dueling with a three to two first time starter for Chad Brown, who backed up and finished seventh in the race. And Jen's battle may have lost the war, but she won the battle of the speeds and that race collapsed. And I think she's a very dangerous player coming out of that race. Unicorn Sally, Des Boards went by here stronger than you know. Got Oh, just horrifically bumped into the gap at Monmouth last start. Yeah, I think Stronger You Know is a very dangerous horse in here. I'm going to bet on her. I think four to one's a good price. She met some tougher horses. I think she's in a good stalking spot here. The question for you, Greg, the two gens battle, the five Stronger Than You Know and the six Sophie's Rules coming off the dirt. Are they going to be battling? Who is the speed of the speed? Is there a speed of the speed? Javier Castellano, rider change on the six Sophie Rules. And key pit, the damn finder's key had only one start on turf. It was the career best buyer speed figure she ever put forth in 82, aired in a 25 claiming race. So interesting, this will be the only foal so far to try the turf. You no, know, I tried. No, no, she has a half that's running, I think, tomorrow. That she has a oh, work. I'm sorry. Didn't run the only foal one. to try the turf one, one, yeah. one for six yeah. lifetime. No, and I, I look. I, I brought back the replay of her dam's race. We showed on Talking Horse a little mm -hmm. bit earlier from 2014. And you know what? She's a, it's funny. We talked about this in Saratoga. Tom Amos had that crazy 45, the one shot that ran third. These are the kind of horses you throw in your tries and supers somewhere and try to get a price in there. You saw what we have still to come this afternoon. We're fast and firm here. We are fast and firm at Churchill Downs as well. We'll check back in with Frank Lyons in just a little bit. But two minutes to post in this race. Coming up in our two to one favorite, my sassy Sarah, as you take a look at the prices from that eighth at Churchill Vomba with that win, $11.20. This race, you know, back to the five for a moment, stronger than you know. So the second start of her career, it was her first turf try at Monmouth, and she was running a huge race. She was neck and neck on the lead the entire way and then got bumped into oblivion in that open gap there, and that, that cost her all chance, I thought. Absolutely, and the horse who bumped her was the horse who won the race and got disqualified. The second finisher was a Wesley Ward horse that had gone over to Royal Ascot. That's how much he thought of her. So it's possible that she's coming out of a much stronger race, and as you've correctly pointed out, she was badly compromised last time out. I think she's a very fair price right now at 7-2. to two. Greg, I get the feeling you and I may like the same horse today. Doesn't happen a lot. The five? Stronger than you know? I do. I yeah. do. I like her a I'm lot with in you. here. I'm with you. Uh, earn a $10 bonus just for betting the best racing today. Bet $50 at Belmont and 50 at Churchill on a Naira Bets app. Or win or lose, you'll earn a $10 bonus. The 50-50 promotion. It's available every Friday through the remainder of the month of September. Go to NairaBets.com for all the details. There she is. And 7-2, uh, to I think, is... Very fair. I agree. I think it's a very fair price. I'm not saying that we're saying she should be a lot shorter in here. But I, like Unicorn Sally, to me, and maybe she's worked well since her last race, but she's the kind of horse that on paper people go, ooh, look, you made that big close. If you watch the race, she wasn't particularly impressive. She never really threatened. She was running when the race was over, and she was the beneficiary of the fast pace that Jen's Battle was involved in. And I think the fact that she finished behind the two Jen's Battle frankly shows that Jen's Battle ran a better race. What about that one who just left our screen, the four, Des Boards? I hope I'm saying that right. The central banker filly. She put in a little bit of run until they got into the stretch. Then she started to back up a little bit. That was just her first career start. I, I agree. I don't think she's totally impossible in this race. One thing that, 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 that took me off of her, she was 13-1 to 1 in her debut for West Point Stables. 
West Point Stables horses get bet. And it just feels like that's an awfully big price. And I just wonder if at the end of the day she's really that good. But she could run better here. I certainly have her in the mix somewhere. She's 10 to 1 on the board, the four filly in this spot. What about my sassy Sarah as Manny Franco looks to duplicate what Jose Lescano did yesterday and win the first four races? I don't like the race she's coming out of. I thought she hung like a chandelier in a race that she looked like she had won and she got beaten for second by a speed that she passed, but she can improve in her second start. Well, the, so the filly that ran second in there, she'd come back and win her next by six and a half lengths. Now, granted, it was a race that was taken off the turf, but still. Yeah, you could also argue that maybe it was a better race than we thought because she was on the wrong surface and she still won fairly easily. Yeah. So I won't be surprised when the seven, my sassy Sarah runs well, but as the favorite, I don't mind betting against her or a short price because the unicorn Sally, is there a story or is this just a terrible favorite? Do you know a unicorn named Sally? I do not, but we Mustang may Sally after this somehow race. related? Unicorn Five Sally and Mustang two Sally? Favorite. People that. love to see getting off slow, making yeah. up all that ground late, right? It's just, to me, it's just such a fun... Well, look at the last race, the horse that won. The one horse who got so heavily over bet for Linda Rice. Slow race, made a big run, sucked people in. Late pick five begins here. Let's set it upstairs to the voice of New York Racing. For the call, here's Larry Colmus. They're all in line. They're off. Stronger than you know, quick out of the gate. Keep Pitt came out running in second. These two with the most early foot from my sassy Sarah. Then Jen's battle on the inside, De Bord is next. Then Sophie rules, and on their inside, it's Unicorn Sally as the field heads up the backstretch where Key Pit is sent on through to challenge Stronger Than You Know, and the two of them are now a neck apart with Key Pit in front as they race for the far turn. A 21.8 opening quarter mile. Now they're four lengths ahead of My Sassy Sarah. Jen's battle is fourth on the inside by another three. Then Sophie rules, De Bord, and last of them all is Unicorn Sally. Around the far turn, it is Key Pit, and Stronger Than You Know, locked in battle with My Sassy Sarah and Jen's battle right behind them as they come toward the top of the stretch. And now here comes my sassy Sarah and Manny Franco ranging up alongside to take the lead at the eighth pole and taking off here from Stronger Than You Know. Then comes Jen's battle and up into fourth is day board. Manny Franco 4-4-4 four, four, four today. My sassy Sarah by five and a half lengths over Stronger Than You Know. Jen's battle and day board. Manny Franco, four races, four wins on this Friday the 13th. You could feel Manny Franco's was licking his chops around the three ace ball, right? When the long shot won, Key Pitta, we mentioned the, the turf pedigree was gunned up the lead, getting in the way of our worst, the five stronger than you know. And there's Manny just sitting behind, keeping the two gens battle, and Irad Ortiz locked in inside of him. But at the end of the day, big duel or not, my sassy Sarah Greg, she was best. Seven, five, two, four, and does go off your favorite in the end here. Favoritism shifted from Unicorn Sally to this one. Daughter of Summer front, and the public, after three wins in a row, start to catch on. Oh, maybe I should bet Manny Franco. Well, maybe it's the thing. If you win the first race, you're always going to win the next three races here. And I'll tell you something, Manny's got two very live mounts among the next four races. Diane's impassable in race number six, but also the horse we talked about, J.C. Shooting Star, who, if not the favorite, is certainly not going to be a big price. So. Broken border in the next? Uh, not he, without a chance. Not without a chance. It's, it's a tough spot for her, but you're right, not without a chance. Manny Franco, four win day through the first four on the card. Can he keep it going? What a start to the Friday card for that young rider. We'll be back with prices set up the fifth next. You couldn't compose a better pedigree. A half brother to Beholder. Beholder's gonna go all the way. A half brother to Into Mischief. Into Mischief wins the Kef most versatile performer from this brilliant family. Mendelssohn's gonna do it. Mendelssohn has won it by a length. What a win by Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn by a conservative 17 lengths. Scat Daddy's best bred son at start, Mendelssohn. That time at Oaklawn, when a home run made for a big night. Bet on your favorite teams at Oaklawn's new race and sports book. Oaklawn, a new level of action, a new level of excitement. 
The thermal spring waters our city is named after are known for their legendary healing properties. Their thirst quenching properties are pretty nice too. Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's different here. Come see why. They're off. Bet the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn to the lead for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. At any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaVets.com. Back on America's Day at the Races on Fox Sports 2. It's brought to you in part by the champion sprinter Ron Happy. Raced his entire career, medication free, never lost while sprinting as well. Now standing for $25,000 at Claiborne Farm. My sassy Sarah, she goes off as the favorite to kick off the late pick five and Manny Franco, the story today, four mounts through the first four races and four wins. I mean, he's in the right spot. Obviously, you have to be in the right horses. And Angel Cordero doing a great job as agent, but uh, Manny's doing everything right here. Now, nice to see him back on track. Now tied with a man who won the first four in the card yesterday as the leading rider at the meet. That's Jose Lescano and that man right there. Let's go downstairs to Acacia Courtney. Well, Manny Franco told us he was going to try to sweep the card, and he's on his way, but I'm standing by here with winning trainer Michelle Nevin and my sassy Sarah, second time out. She made a very professional second race here today. Yeah, definitely. You know, with one race under her belt, you know, she was ready to go today. Tell me what you were thinking as she was positioned early in the race in what seemed like the perfect spot. Well, Manny can't make any mistakes today, so it was nice to see him just sit and wait and it looked like he had a ton of horse, and when he pulled her out, she was there for him. And how does that feel, having a, a two-year-old filly that's just ready to roll and, and getting a nice win with the owners here as well? Yes, they're right over there. It's a, a great feeling. Winning is always fun. <laughs> it certainly is, Michelle. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And my sassy Sarah gets the job done in her second start, Greg, and four wins and counting, perhaps, for Manny Franco. Well, he'll go for number five coming up in this next race on Broken Borders. You get a look at Michelle Nevin, my sassy Sarah, second time out, maiden breaking score. You know, and Michelle Nevin, I, I, I'm a huge fan of Michelle Nevin. I think she's just one of the best trainers in the grounds. And she's not a trainer known for first time starters. And I probably underrated this horse because the assumption should have been the horse would improve second time out. And she really did. Good trip or not. All right, I know we should probably talk about the entry, but we have to start with Manny Franco. Broken border, what do you see? Seven-year-old mares, her chances, five-time winner here at Belmont Park. He doesn't have a mount in the last race, Manny Franco, but if he gets broken border home, I'm gonna say he's gonna win the first seven today because he's got something magical going on out here. She's okay, and she's not bad for a price horse. This is a tough spot, Craig. Much more on our fifth coming up. It kicks off the late pick four. We're gonna shift gears, head to Louisville at Churchill Downs. Check it again with Frank Lyons. So looking at this race, guys, uh, it's mile and 16, non-winners of two lifetimes. It's a very, very tough race. And the, the two, Al-Khatam, looks great. He was the morning line favorite at 7-2. to two. I think he's sitting up there at about 4-1 to one right now. He's actually your current favorite right now. But the horse that I like in here is an interesting horse. It's Captivating Moon. He's only tried the dirt twice. The reason he's only tried the dirt twice is because it's been working with him running on the grass, you know? He's been placed and run very well in several races and last time out Chris Block seen fit to enter him in the Arlington Million and he finished seven being six lengths. Now the only two races he's had on the dirt was one in the Bourbon. They don't show on the form but one in the Bourbon that was rained off the grass at Keeneland. Didn't run any good there but the other start is he was second in the Spentrift Juvenile going seven furlongs beaten ahead right here at Churchill and I think that this return to the dirt is exactly what captivating Moon needs, and I love this nine to two right now. So back to dirt. That's the play right now, four to one, right at the morning line for Captivating Moon for trainer Chris Block, Florent Giroux on board. This is the kind of horse I personally like to book. This is a turf horse. Why, why? This horse ran twice in the dirt and didn't do any running at all, Greg. This is not a terrible field. This horse is going to have to improve substantially over well, the, the dirt races. That's one runner-up finish. Yeah, with a 68 buyer. 
and was immediately running figures that were 20 points higher, the turf. Doesn't this horse have the look of a horse that wants the other surface? Well, certainly many more accomplished runners <laughs> on, on dirt. dirt in this spot. We'll see what happens. It's a wide open betting race. Four to one's your favorite. That's the two, Alka Tom. Danny Pites, Jimmy Graham will be aboard. I mean, there's no, this tough is to a fall tough in love with anyone in this race, right? It, yeah, it's a very tough race. The other thing is, you know, we've seen how good speed is, and it's supposed to be even better around two turns. The speed is the 11 own agenda, but it's not going to be easy to clear from out there, is it, Greg? Uh, I would say no. I would agree with you on that. We're going to take a break. We'll have the post parade from the ninth at Churchill when we come back. Just four minutes to post. We'll have this for you live when we return on America's Day at the Races. Flatter. This prolific son of AP Indy has sired six millionaires, including Eclipse champion West Coast. This year, he's adding even more stakes winners to his outstanding record, including Sovereign Award winner Avis Flatter. In the auction ring, his yearlings have topped the phasing tipped in July sale two years in a row. Success on the track, success in the ring. Flat, standing at Cleveland Park. Oh, we are gonna go traveling. No problem. Run happy standing at Claiborne Farm. Coming on strong. Minute to stardom. On top coming down to the final 16th. Opening up a two length lead. Wild about star shining big here in the very one. Oh, what did I wrong? Testing, one, two. The star guitar Philly lead champagne diva close to home. It's testing, one, two. my love for you. Coming on strong. Welcome back to uh, America's Day at the Races on a gorgeous, gorgeous Friday afternoon here at Belmont Park. But the action, and of course we're brought to you by ABR, America's Best Racing. The action is at Churchill Downs. It's a cool afternoon here at Belmont, but it's pretty warm at Churchill. The number one in race nine is December 7. Brian Hernandez riding for trainer Paul McGee as this one goes second off a little bit of a freshening. The number two, as we wait for the number two, the two is Alcatam, the gray favorite, I think, the current favorite. Danny Pites trains. James Graham with the mount. John Court riding the number three for Joe Petal Petalino. That is the three cat daddy, a long shot at 46 to one right now. The number four, Blue Ridge Traveler. Jose Ortiz riding this one for Kenny McPeak. Second off a 16-month layoff. The number five, you heard Frank Lyons talking about this one, Captivating Moon. Back on the dirt, Florent Giroux riding for Chris Block. The number six, that's on patrol. Thomas Vance, the trainer. Tyler Bays has the mount, 38 to one currently. A long shot. Number seven, Hawakam. Miguel Mena riding for Wesley Hawley on a horse that does have some dirt races that are okay. Going back to Churchill Downs. The number eight, Fort Peck at 43 to one. Chris Landeros, we saw him up in Saratoga this summer riding for his father-in-law, Ian Wilkes. The number Hardly a secret to none, I'm back. Excellent. Seven to one. You're, you're like incredible. You're like a superhero. Hardly a secret for our friend Tom Amos. Second off the claim for Tom Amos, stretching out in distance. Tom had a win. Dead heat in the opener today, by the way. Uh, Mrs. Hippie, 15 to 1. Julian Le Peru, Juan Moquette coming off a win at Ellis last start. This one has some speed, but maybe not enough speed to clear this field. Own 
agenda. Nine to one, Ricardo Santana Jr., Sharita Vo. Nobody, if anyone can clear from post 11 in this race, it's Ricardo Santana. And this one is a major player for Sharita Vo. Here's Han Sense, Mike Maker runner, comes in for Prairie Meadows. Yeah, and uh, in theory is taking a bit of a drop. I mean, the source has races also once again that gives him a chance, but can he get the right trip from that outside post? Yeah, that is uh, tough being drawn all the way out there. But Han Sense, some decent form. In fact, the last time this horse was at Churchill Downs, won at this condition at 36 to one. Pretty impressive and beat in that race, Hawakam. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, if you take the post out of the equation, this horse is a man. If this race was running straight away, a big player. I'm going to say one of two things here. I think either the 11 own agenda clears and wires the field, or the 1 December 7 gets the trip on the inside. So those are the two I'd be fooling around with, the 11 and 1. Hawakam's okay in here, but don't really want the favorite in what seems like a pretty wide open race, right? Yeah, five to two. That's getting a little short on Al Katam, the two in here. Let's check in again with Frank Lyons. All right, guys. So the reason that Al Katam has been bet to five to two is because he looks so good in the paddock. Big, gray, beautiful horses, son of Tappet. Trained by Danny Pites for the Shadwell stable. Uh, James Graham is aboard. He was seven to two in the morning line. He drifted up to as high as nine to two, but now he's been bet to five to two, and he did look the best of the paddock. Well, I'm going with the five, Captivating Moon. All the horses that looked well were the number one. I just heard Andy mention December 7th, part of the speed. The speed is very important today. Looks like it's holding. And the two, Al-Khatam, won't, Al won't be that far off the pace. Whereas Captivating Moon will come from a, a lot further back, but I'm just uh, hoping that the form will work out. Frank, thank you. What you. Did Blue Ridge Traveler, the four, interest you at all? Oh, I definitely think he's a contender. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I think we're both naturally drawn to the second off a layoff and the stretch out, right? I mean, the first race was a very useful return, not a great effort, but obviously he can improve from that. And he seems to be a horse better suited to a distance. And isn't his third place in the Essex two back, albeit a year and a half ago, good enough to be a major player here? I absolutely think so. I think he's really interesting. Second start back, definitely needed that last. Travis Stone with the call. Here's the ninth from Churchill Downs. They're in the gate. And they're off. Hardly a secret with a good start on the far outside. December 7, flashing speed. Alcatam comes up on through, and hand sent for that outside post crosses over as well. December 7, though, with that inside post hugging the rail into the clubhouse turn. Alcatam tracks to pace on the outside, racing second by three. Cat Daddy comes away third, hand sent racing fourth. Blue Ridge Traveler over to the inside to be fifth. Fort Peck racing in sixth. Captivating Moon up into seventh. Hardly a secret has dropped back to be eighth. On patrol three wide in ninth. On Agenda is running along in 10th. Hawakam is down inside 11th and Mississippi the last of them all. 12 lengths top to bottom. The quarter solid 23, two fifth seconds, five for lungs to go. December 7 showing the way, clear by a length and a half. Alcatam is tracking this pace intently from second with four for lungs to go. Three lengths back to hand sense who's on the outside running along in third. Blue Ridge Traveler still down inside racing. Fourth, Fort Peck is fifth. Captivating move is sixth. Five lengths back from there to On Patrol and Cat Daddy. On agenda starting to muster up a rally. Hawakam sticks to the rails around the far turn. December 7 is still in front round the turn. Holding on to the lead so far. Hand sense on the far outside. Pokes up into second. Alcatam is back into third. Blue Ridge Traveler is fourth. They're off the turn. December 7 is still in front. Top of the stretch in front by length. Hand sense running a big race on the outside, putting in a bid. Blue Ridge Traveler rallying boldly down the side of the track. Farther back, Hawakam's trying to come through. Captivating Moon muscles his way through in. Very tight is that one. On agenda late on the scene, 200 yards to go. Blue Ridge Traveler has to fend off Hawakam, who skims through down inside. These two on the wire together. Blue Ridge Traveler, Hawakam, Captivating Moon, and On Agenda. Blue Ridge Traveler, he held on here, didn't he? 
I thought that he did, the number four. Now my question is, who was down on the rail? Oh, it was a walk -em down on the inside. What a great ride by Miguel Maina getting that clear run on the strong rail. But I think it's the horse we talked about, Blue Ridge Traveler, Jose Ortiz. Jose Ortiz is everywhere. He's back here on Sunday making a cameo appearance, and we appreciate you coming to town, Jose. I think he's probably in Canada tomorrow or up at, up at church. Who knows where he is? He's everywhere. But wherever he is, he's riding winners. I, yeah, I don't think Hawakam ever got a nose in front. Blue Ridge Traveler second off a long layoff. Candy McPeak, Horizon Stables, the son of Tonner and Serve. I believe he held on. Yeah, and, you know, a good run by Frank's horse. I did not like Frank's horse, Captivating Moon, but he was third in the photo and ran well. An excellent ride in him by Florent Giroux because he, too, saved as much ground as he could. He split horses here. He had no choice. He didn't realize how much drifting there would be at this point. There was a little bit of bumping with him with the number two horse, but I think that horse was tiring. But it does seem like the five was third. So what do you think, Greg? Four, seven. I don't know, man. I I'm going to tell you, the inside got. From Very that tough. angle, doesn't it look like, I mean, yeah. if it was in New York, I would be confident that the seven horse on the inside yeah. got it because I know our angle. I don't know the First angle two times there. I saw it, I thought it was this one. That last angle looked like Hawakum, but uh, I'm usually wrong. I, I tell you, if I was the cameraman, unless maybe he knows the angle, says the four got it. I'd want to be showing both the four and seven, wouldn't you? Whew. I want to punish the, the fans too much if you have this four or seven. All right, back to Belmont. We'll let you know as soon as that is posted. Race five here at Belmont Mile. Turf entry is at six to five in here. Really, both halves of the entry are ultra tough. But Medita, her state's debut, I thought was exceptional. She was running on that inner turf and Coffee Crush had the lone lead that day. The rail was out on the inner turf, and she still made up a ton of ground. Yeah, you know, it's a funny race. I picked Coffee Crush because I thought she'd be a solid fit, price near. She's not going to be two to one. She'll probably be third choice by post time. And I thought this entry would probably be odds on. And I'm not sure the entry shouldn't be odds on because I don't disagree. I think a lot of people I thought were a little bit too critical of Joel Rosario and Medita felt he was a little bit overconfident and waited too long. Maybe he was a little bit in there. I'm not that sure we do have the Churchill result? We do. It was Blue Ridge Traveler the four. So four, seven, five, eleven. Um, Never in doubt. Thank you, Greg. Never. We knew it. We called it. <laughs> um, until I called it the other way. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I don't disagree that Joel was a little bit overconfident. I think Joel would probably say he was, but I don't think he, I think he took a little bit too much abuse. The thing is, Medina's got pivotal connection in here as well, who was blocked the entire stretch last time behind the talented Mitchell Road. This is a very tough two-pronged entry. Yeah, Mitchell Road, for those who don't know, she had won four in a row, and then they decided to try the Diana with her. That's how good she was going for Bill Mine. I think she was only about five to one in the Diana. That's how well she had been yeah. running. Here's Medina, her stable mate, or... Entry mate, I should say. Joel Rosario back for state's start number two. The stronger half of the entry, mostly because of the recency. We will see if she gets the right trip today. Here's Pivotal Connection. She hasn't raced since December 7th. I've been wondering where she's been. I bet her last time, Greg. She ran very well. If she wasn't blocked inside, she would have won. Also ran against Lady Panaway, Chad Brown, who won the grade three Long Island. Yep. Here's the rail runner, Coffee Crush. Lone lead last time out. Didn't seal the deal. That bothered me. I, I don't disagree. I have no excuse for her last time. But you know what? She's not going to be two to one. I think by post time, you'll see her at a higher price, closer to three to one. And I'm going to take a chance she wires them today. Yeah, she's going to have no pressure, right? No. Altia, you look at her last two starts, it is tough to, to, to like her because it really seemed like she had every opportunity to get by. I, I agree. I mean, I think the term equine chandelier applies yeah. to Altia. Here is the five. This is Broken Border. Can Manny Franco make it five for five? Finally broke through last time with a win at seven for a long stretch is out. Tougher company, but she's got a magic man at her back today. That's for sure. And on the outside, 17-1, Hollywood Glory. Finally put her on the turf for the first time in her career last start. She ran against Coffee Crush and Medita. She wound up fifth beat nine lengths. And, and I think the reason Mark Kennedy's given another chance against a similar group is that she was eliminated going in the first turn. So if you think she has a chance to try turf, you've got to give her another chance. Whether or not she means to be a factor remains to be seen. Could she be the stalker in here? Yeah, very likely. Could be. But... <laughs> That's the. Can you make the excuse, going back to Coffee Crush for a moment, who should be alone on the lead in here and does get the rail, maybe the, the give in the ground was her undoing? Maybe. I, I, you know, that's being kind. Listen, I picked her back. That's being kind. She's, she's had her chances in races. The thing is, though, you look at the last two turf races before that, that was much tougher company. And she ran fast enough to win. 
I don't know. Maybe it was the give. She should have gotten the job done, but she still ran well enough, and I just thought she's a decent alternative against the entry, who I thought would be odds on. Approaching the five-minute mark to post here at a race that kicks off the late pick four on this Friday afternoon. Let's head track side to Acacia Courtney. Greg, thank you. I will start with that entry as I did just get a chance to speak to trainer Arno Delacour about the number one Medita as last time out was her first U.S. start and her first start with him and she was very keyed up, really acting, really high strung in the paddock at Saratoga. She's very much on her toes in here today, but she was acting better and more professional than she was last time and Arno said she's gotten better. She's settled a little bit more since coming to the U.S. and he said just training methods in general are different here than what she had been used to overseas. He was a little bit concerned if we're going to see quite as, as much of a punchy effort as we saw in Saratoga, but he did think that she would prefer the Belmont surface versus what she ran at Saratoga, and he thought maybe just a, a little bit more to her liking in here. So some good things there for the one Medita, her entry mate, the 1A Pivotal Connection. Now she got a bit of an aggressive warm up on track. I, I have a few concerns about this one. We haven't seen her since December. Um, she's sm a smaller stack really kind of striding out and reaching on her front end in the paddock and then had to be asked pretty hard by John Velasquez to get that warm-up a little bit high-headed still on the track there as far as her warm-up does go. The two Coffee Crush looks sensational. She's always been a good-looking horse though so she can really fool you in the paddock before the race. I'm not quite sure what to make of her. On looks alone she'd get the nod from me but she just hasn't seen the winner's circle since she broke her maiden. As far as the three Altia goes She's another one that always runs well, but as Greg said, she's hard to take just virtue of the fact that she's always right there um, without being able to get the job done. Very feminine European look to her. And finally, Give a little nod to the six Hollywood glory. She's acting much better than she was last time. She was kind of keyed up in the paddock. They kept her separate from the horses um, in the paddock today, but she, she never really got too much uh, out from underneath of herself. Warming up nicely on track, not a definitive turf appearance to her, but she looks super fit. And actually last time out, if you take a look at that race again, Tapping Pearl totally blew the turn and pushed her out a little bit as well as she was a bit rank. So she had a nightmare trip on the turf and does deserve a second chance at a big price. So she has some strong contenders to deal with in here today. Well, you're getting 22 to one. Thank you, Acacia, for the second try here on the turf for Hollywood glory, but seemingly up against it with some talented turfers, including that one right there, Pivotal Connection, although she's not yet won on the turf, Pivotal Connection. Both of her wins, they've come on synthetic over in Ireland as we take a look at her most recent start back in December. Hey, this is just one of those things, I think that Richie Migliori would say, this is an unlucky ride. Junior Alvarado was doing the right thing, he's saving ground behind horses, and you just have to sort of expect at some point you get some kind of scene. She never got it, and even though Junior never really stopped riding her, he never was able to get her in that position you want to be in, and he basically ate her in the end. I think she might have won that race if she got clear, and I'm saying that because I bet her. That's why the fence can be a precarious place in turf racing. Absolutely. I mean, in a lot of cases, you're better off the two path to give yourself options. But I think Junior was sort of just unlucky that day. There she is. So this will be her first start since December 7th. Significant layoff, although she, she ran Decent off the bench when she came back in September of 2018. I agree. And Bill Mott doesn't have great numbers off layoffs, but he doesn't have terrible numbers, his barn. He's 18% with over 100 stars, and the ROI is just short of $2. So it's not like his horses are dramatically underperforming. He's actually beating the takeout. So I think you can get expected to run so well. So you, th you thought she was the tougher half of the entry? No. I wanted to better. Okay. I, I, because if she was running by herself, I think you might get three. Let's say there was no entry in here. Couldn't she be three, three and a half to one in this race? No. So I'd take a shot with her. But no, I think. Yeah, Medita's the, uh, the is, one to beat. Uh, uh, agreed. She has the recency. And, you know, I, I, can we show that stretch run of the last race? Because maybe we'll give people a, a look at it. Because I thought Joel took a little bit of too harsh criticism, but he was a little bit overconfident. He was more Pat Day than Joel Rosario in this race. Waiting, waiting, Patient. waiting. Yeah, and he didn't <laughs> really start riding her. Look at her. She's down the rail in those yellow silks, those things. Watch him. He's, he's kind of niggling at her a little bit. You see the arms move. Look, he's a little bit passive. And I think he expected more of a response. Then he went, I'm not getting anything. I better start moving. And I think it frustrated a lot of betters. I get why they're frustrated. I'm still not sure it was really Joel's fault. I think it was a little harsh on him. And, you know, it was Coffee Crush 
who he was trying to run down. She'd wind right. up getting beat by East Moon. But Coffee Crush had the lone lead that day. And Gave for Medita to make up that ground, I thought that, I just really thought that was an impressive run, even though she came up short. Well, here's one for you. You brought up, and I think it's a valid point, with Coffee Crush maybe not loving the softer ground. Isn't a horse like Medita coming over from Europe? Wouldn't she have benefited more? So wouldn't a firmer turf in some ways help Coffee Crush and maybe not necessarily help Medita? Just a thought. No, potentially. So, I, well, a lot of Europeans, frankly, you know, people think Europeans come over here because they need Lasix. Now, in some cases, I'm sure that's true. But a lot of the ones come over here because they're in search of firmer turf than they ever get over in Europe. That's a good point. But Coffee Crush, you know, has had a lot of opportunities with leads before. Now, granted, yep. this, some of the company was better That's the, and has not got the job done. That, no, I agree. She's had her chances, but she was 4-1, to 18-1, to 7-1, to 9-1. to one. It's not as though she's been failing at short prices in her races. There is Medita Joel Rosario back aboard. Try number two here. And we'll see if she's a little more acclimated. She broke fine in that race. Yeah. That wasn't an issue. Four to five now in the entries you expected. Well, clearly the connections with Medita are not overly upset with Joel's ride, or they wouldn't have brought him back right. on here. And I think Joel probably, you know, he's a, an honest guy. He probably said maybe I was a little bit overconfident. Maybe he was. I'm not sure, but maybe he was. Coffee Crush from the inside post. The two going to try and take him gate to wire. Can Medita or someone else run her down? We're going to find out. Here's the fifth from Belmont. We send it upstairs to the voice of Horse Racing's Triple Crown for the call, Larry Colmus. They're all in line. They're off. Coffee Crush immediately to the early lead. And Hollywood Glory came out running in second and goes with Coffee Crush early. These two with Pivotal Connection and Medita right behind third and fourth. Now Medita grabs third on the inside and is just two and a half lengths off the lead. Then Broken Border, Altia is the trailer. So up the back stretch they go and it is Coffee Crush in front. On top by a length, trying to shake away from Hollywood Glory. And then it's Medita in third. She's three lengths behind and three lengths ahead of Pivotal Connection. The broken border, Altia, is last to a 22.24 opening quarter mile. Coffee Crush up top. The pace is hot. She's the leader by a length and a half here over Hollywood Glory. And Medita is a strong third behind them. She's three lengths behind as they make their way for the far turn. Pivotal Connections got five and a half lengths to make up. Then Broken Border, Altia is the trailer. 44.51 was the half mile posted here for Coffee Crush, who leads the way by three lengths on the far turn. And now Medita is beginning to move up in second. That is all for Hollywood Glory. Pivotal Connection is next. Altia is there on the far outside. And Broken Border, Coffee Crush kicks away again. Medita did not go on, and Coffee Crush has suddenly opened up four. Altia is on the outside, and Pivotal Connection is next, and Medita has backpedaled to fourth as Coffee Crush comes down to the wire, a tail-swishing winner. Coffee Crush won it by four lengths over Pivotal Connection, and then came Altia and Broken Border. Was that got stormy or was that coffee crush? So one of two things happened here. 132 and two. One of two things happened, Greg. Somebody, some bird flew by and started the timer about a second early <laughs> because those fractions were insane. Or coffee crush, as you alluded to, really liked a very, very firm turf course. And I think one of the things you can point to that the pace may have these fractions and times are accurate. Medina was trying to chase the pace, right? So Medita was too close to a fast pace, and she just went out the back door. And behind Coffee Crush, the race completely collapsed. No one posed a threat at any point in this race here. Coffee Crush blitzes this field. That is an incredibly sharp final time, 132 and two. The course record's 131 and one. You know, it's funny, you and I are watching it and you said the turn, I think she's gone. And I said, I don't know. And then they came to stretch and you said to me, she's just powering away from these. I mean, well, she wanted to overdrive. And uh, you know, listen, even if the fractions end up being a little bit faster than they were, we'll, we'll check it out. I mean, I have no reason to not believe them. They just seem so fast. That's all I'm saying. She loved a firm turf, Greg, and that's what she was looking for. Yes, she did. This is the second win of her career, her maiden win. It came at Aqueduct back in December 2017. Long time between drinks for her. Coffee Crush crushes them in the fifth. Prices when we come back. 
go from Railbird to Winner Circle. With My Racehorse, you have access to top horses and trainers, backside tours, exclusive ownership experiences, and fast payouts to your online account. With shares starting as little as $100, the Winner Circle is waiting for you. Go to MyRacehorse.com or download the My Racehorse app today to join the thousands who have already started their journey as a racehorse owner. Piranha, the leader in fly control and wipe and spray products, now has premium equine grooming products. Introducing Aloe Pro Shampoo, an organic concentrate enriched with vitamins A, D, and E, and silk protein. Piranha Detangler, a dry comb through detangling spray that conditions, moisturizes, keeping tail and mane manageable. And Shine Baby Shine, a water based coat conditioner that leaves a show ring shine every time. Visit piranhaeat.com to see our full line of equine products and for a limited time, use promo code NYRA to receive a 10% discount on your order. Piranha on, pests gone. They're off. Bet the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Yeah. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn of the lead for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. Back on America's Day at the Races, brought to you in part by legendary Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual unusually well. Race five in the books, Coffee Crush jumped out to the front and never looked back. Just the second win of her career, 132 and two final time. How did you resist saying Coffee Crush crushed? I did say it. No, you said you didn't. You didn't fall for the pun. I'm very proud of you. Oh, you said going to break? Well, I said crush, crushed them. No, I didn't, you said, didn't say it that time. Oh, okay. You said you. Going so to you break. give me credit. No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just how can you resist? Let's head downstairs to Acacia. Greg, thank you. And Coffee Crush certainly did crush. And Jimmy, when she got out to the front and she had a little pressure early, what was your thought process early in the race? Because she went very fast today. Well, it's not early in the race that you think about. It's late in the race that you have to worry about. So, uh, but she ran really well today. I mean, she ran fast all the way, and she had another gear when they, you know, toward the end, she kicked in again. So we're really happy with the race today. And she's kept some very good company recently, and, and this just her second career victory. How does it feel to get her to the winner's circle? She certainly deserves to be. Well, she deserves to win a race. I mean, she's had a tough year trying to run against some great stake horses all year. So finally got her in where she belongs, had a good race under her belt at Saratoga, and we're happy for Sophie. And see Sophie Flay, the owner, as you mentioned, Bobby Flay's daughter. And it seems like Coffee Crush has a little bit of spunk to her as well. We saw her swishing her tail a bit down the lane, but she still had a lot to offer. Yes. Well, she does that, that tail switching. I guess she don't, you know, she doesn't She doesn't like the stick so much. So, uh, But meanwhile, that, that's her. So as long as she keeps going when she's doing it, that's okay. Very impressive performance from her today. Jimmy, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Coffee Crush all the way. Greg, very impressive performance. Uh, extremely impressive performance. Well done job, Jimmy Toner. Getting yeah. this four-year-old filly to run a race like that. Yeah, I liked what he said. It's not how fast they're going early, it's how fast they're going late yeah. here. And I'm sure Jimmy had similar feelings to us, like watching going, man, she's going awfully fast out there. It's a little scary, but had to be excited how she kicked in. And, and, and he's right, she's run some awfully good races and just been in tough spots. And today, everything fell into place. We move on, race six. It's a New York bred $50,000 maiden claiming event. Sprinting six furlongs coming up. And Candy Graham for Mongo. Yeah. For you know, getting half of the entry favored. I'm just shocked that I'm not getting the four to one morning line that this horse was. Back to Churchill Downs. Let's check in again with Frank Lyons. Hey guys, uh, this last race is a very wide open race and the favorite right now is the 10, Dinar at five to two. Dinar, you ran fourth last time out, beating four lengths to a horse called NYC. That was a first time starter of Todd Pletcher's, uh, son of Declaration of War. Then he ran second behind a horse called Hitch, two starts back. That horse ran twice since the 
since that race, and Hitch ran terrible. So just to warn you about the form of Dinar, but he looks very well here in the paddock. But a horse that I think is an interesting horse is the Seven Fantastry, risen by, uh, ridden by Jose Luis Ortiz. Gets Lasix for the first time. It's the second start. Jose rode him first time out in Saratoga. He went off 46 to 1, finished fifth, beaten six and three quarters. Now Jose look, seen enough there to ride him back. That's the last race at Churchill, you know, Jose Luis Ortiz hanging around to ride this uh, second time starter for Kenny McPeak. I think he ran an even race first time out, and I think he'll, he'll run very well here today. Also then, the two horse is a young Philip, uh, trained by Phil Diamato. He's been training at Churchill Downs Training Center, training very well for his slight return. He's been off since the 23rd of uh, June. He was a favorite in two of his last three starts. And he finished second, beating four and a half lengths. Behind a Mark Cassie trained uh, Super Comet, two back. That one horse won two in a row and then run fourth in the Amsterdam. So that's pretty good form coming out of that race. He's gone against Maidens here. So, and also then, something just a, a quick note, is the eight tank commanders by Warfront out of Treasure Trail. Treasure Trail happens to be a sister to uh, Zenyatta. Uh, so, uh, there is the synopsis for the re last race at Churchill. Frank, thank you very much. We'll get back to the 10th at Churchill in just a moment. Saying, are we saying goodbye to you? You are. Andy Serling saying goodbye. Any Bye. thoughts? Uh, enjoy the last rest of the car. It's a beautiful day here at Belmont. Have fun with Paul. All right, we'll see you on the weekend. Yeah, Paul yep. Duke is stepping in next for Andy. We'll see you right after a break. Grade one winner and track record setter Lee. He traveled the world competing against the best of his generation. Now his progeny are hitting the track. His first winners include Saratoga standout Vast, with juveniles selling for over $400,000 and yearlings bringing up to $650,000. The sky is the limit for this promising young stallion. Lee, standing at Cleveland Farm. He's got a lot of the physical traits that Run Happy stamp in his foals with. He's a, a big horse. He's very well balanced and he looks precocious and fast. He's got lots of bone, very correct, and a big walk and, and very smart head to him. He's very intelligent, Colt. Temperament as well. My horse is a beautiful temperament. He lies down in the stall every day and just a cool horse to be around. Run Happy, standing at Clyburn Farm. Tom Durkin letting you know New York Reds start with an advantage. At the sales, buyers pay up to seven figures. And there's over $2 million in stakes money limited to New York sired horses in the New York Stallion Stakes Series, like the Park Avenue for three-year-old fillies. Newly minted wins it for fun. For fun and money, the winner's share generates an additional $55,000 from the New York Breeding Fund. Funny guys gonna do it. Funny guys winning the Times Square division generates the same money. So get with the program at nybreds.com. You're watching America's Day at the Races on Fox Sports 2 and MSG Plus. It's brought to you in part by the champion sprinter, Run Happy. We're going to see his offspring hitting the racetrack 2020. Now standing at Claiborne Farm for $25,000. Greg Wolf joined by four-time Major League All-Star, Paul Atuka. Good to see you on set. And Thank you. And we have three more coming up here from, from Belmont Park. Three competitive races ahead and uh, the nightcap coming up from Churchill Downs. Yeah, and I think the nightcap from Churchill Downs is very good. I also like a horse um, in this upcoming race in race number uh, six right now. It looks like they're betting one of the first time starters in here, one of the horses that have run, but I like one of the first time starters in here, the three uh, for Joel Rosario, who's been red hot for Michael Stidham. And this is a horse that's been working at Monmouth Park, bullet drills. And I love a horse 
that they only paid three thousand dollars for make it to the races and they debut them for 50 they don't debut them for cheaper than that and he could be, probably could have ran for a lot cheaper down to mama so i think the three the up i mean race at, at excuse me at belmont is very live at five to one uh imperioso right now yeah Ooh, five well to done. one on the board well but done. was nine to five morning line so we'll probably see that Price come down a little bit, I would suspect, as we have our post spread here from Churchill Downs. Here's go for Jim. Dale Romans, Channing Hill, second time starter by Will Take Charge. Yeah, and a horse that ran sort of an even race, made a middle move first time out. Young Philip, Florent Giroux. Yeah, Philip D'Amato and Florent Giroux team up here. Four to one, the horse that's run four times, couple seconds. Blinkers on, Queens Mason. And this horse has shown speed before and now cuts back from a mile and adds blinkers. 14 to one on Queens Mason. Dizzy Sight, we'll see next, I believe, at 13 to 1. There's Dizzy Sight for Rusty Arnold. It's a ridiculous price on a horse that ran a good second, first time out after getting left at Ellis Park in a full field. Um, Rusty Arnold's going hot, too, as well. First time starter for Joe Sharp by Cairo Prince. Spent 350000 on this one, Trigger Man. Yeah, and been working uh, down the pea patch at Ellis Parks. Will debut at Laces. But look at that first work at Keeneland, 47. Look for speed. 46 to 1 first time out, now 3 to 1 on Fantasy. Yeah, it gets Lasix for the second time. 46 to 1 first time out. Do you really want to take 7 to 2 today? 6 to 1 on a firster by Warfront for Donny Van Hemel, Tank Commander. This has got to be real money. Donny Van Hemel's a guy that really doesn't crank up, crank up his first, his first time out, but this Colt by um, Warfront. Written by Joe Rocco is taking some money at the window. Toby Keith, too. Yeah. Dinar, the 10, probably the one to beat and is the favorite right now, coming out of a very productive race last start. Yeah, and two back lost a hitch. This one for Cherie DeVoe, used to be an assistant for Chad Brown. Um, now your favorite. Honoring Major, 58-1. to one. Tough to get to. Cuts back in distance, but the races um, need to get a lot better than the last few. I like the warm-up from that 11. Edgemont Road, William Van Meter, Miguel Mena. You know, I think a horse that... At 20 to 1, you could get to. Uh, last time we ran a decent race in a 12 horse field, was right behind um, Dizzy Sight and there, the four. I think both of those horses are getting dismissed at the window. I'm not telling you the 11's going to win. Use the 11 in your exotics. Okay. 60 to 1. I like it. Back sprinting for the first time since the debut, and the horse didn't run bad at all. We're going to check in again. Frank Lyons with our nightcap from Churchill coming up. Uh, okay. Hi guys, uh, here at Churchill Downs, and currently the favorite is the 10 at 2 to 1, that is the Sherry DeVoe trains, Dinar, and the second favorite at 7 to 2 is the 2, Young Philip, and the other, like, the other horse that was a good looking horse out there is the 5, this first time starter called Triggerman, cost 350,000 out of Timonium, 2 year old sale, when a horse makes 350,000, that means that they have to have a lot of speed, you know, uh, they have to impress at their 2 year old sale, so this horse impressed last year, and Brad Grady stepped in and paid 350,000 for him, I talked to Brad, I talked to Joe. They say he's a very, very nice horse, but he may need the race at seven furlongs. Joe's a little worried about the speed out of the gate, but uh, he says a very, very nice horse, and they're expecting a big run. That's the five trigger man. All right, Frank, thank you. Uh, back to the favorite, Dinar the 10. Sharita Vo looking for her fourth win. Yeah. As a trainer, this horse faced the very good NYC who we saw run at Saratoga. Free Enterprise, that Chad Brown runner, was second in that race, who's run two very, very good races. And then we saw Mubarmaj win yesterday for Chad Brown, mm -hmm. who, who came back to win out of that race. So Dinar, definitely the one to beat. Yeah, and you can go all the way back to Kulik Bear. I mean, that's not a horse, it's a multiple winner. Been working um, great guns at Keeneland. Then went up to Saratoga, worked well, then worked well over the Churchill Downs training track. You see they're getting ready to load. I, I think definitely um, the horse to beat. Uh, the horse on the inside for Dale Romans, who's taking the money, was 2-1 to one first time out at Ellis Park. Now gets Channing Hill aboard. But my issue with the whole thing is, is the four out ran all these horses after getting dead left. Why are they not playing this horse back? I understand 34 to 1, Rusty Arnold. I know 0 for 34 in his, in his second starts. But I think the four is going to run here, especially at 11 or 12 to 1. Well, they're looking at Ellis maybe. But, yeah, that might be a mistake because we have some horses who've run at Ellis who are going to yep. be major players in the two-year-old stakes. 
coming up this weekend at Churchill Downs. Yeah, I mean, listen, they raised the purses up there to, to $50,000 um, in the main special weight, so a lot of the Midwest trainers stayed there, and we saw a lot of good horses. Um, we'll see Dennis's moment, um, a horse that ran a giant race over a 90-some-odd buyer um, tomorrow, so Dallas horses have been live. Travis Stone with a call. Here's the nightcap from Churchill Downs. In the gate, and they're off. Even beginning, go for Jim toward the inside. Young Philip is also there. Triggerman races up to make it four across the track. Queens Mason's in the mix as well. Edgemont Road comes away running along in fifth. Fantasy over to the inside to be sixth. Dinar's on the move up into seventh. Honoring Major is running along in eighth. Dizzy Sight inside, ninth by five. Tank Commander's at the back of the pack. Ten lengths off the lead and five for longs to go. Go for Jim. Down on the inside with a narrow lead. Young Phillip right alongside in second. They're head and head with four furlongs left. By the half mile pull together. Opening quarter in 22 seconds flat. Trigger man on the far outside poking up into third. Queens Mason is right there. Fantasy's down inside. Edgemont Road is wide on the track. Dinar's getting closer, but it's also wide. Then it's Dizzy Sight, followed by Honoring Major as they round the far turn. It's Young Phillip who comes away with the lead. Angles over to the inside and kicks away by two. Young Phillip is off the turn now in front by three, now by four. Queens Mason is battling on Edgemont Road is there. Dinar center the track with one for long to go. Young Phillip still in front, in front by two and a half. Queens Mason battles on Edgemont Road. Dinar, tank commander from far, far behind, is rallying boldly down the center of the track. 100 yards to catch Young Phillip, who's still in front. Tank commander surging. Dinar in between. Here's the wire. Tank commander got it. Running down Young Phillip in the last few strides. Dinar was third, Edgemont Road in Queens Mason. First timer, son of Warfront, had to be patient and wait for this one to make his debut as a four-year-old, late wow. in his four-year-old campaign. Yeah, and I think Toby Keith is probably singing, how do you like me now with this one? This horse came from way out of it. We've seen speed be very good today um, at Churchill Downs, especially the rail. This horse did not break well. Um, the money showed up. I talked about the Donnie Van Hemmel runners usually don't really crank up first time out. But look where this horse is dead last on your screen. And is this going to go, I guess, split horses or go all the way? No, let's go all the way to the outsides. You know how hard that is to absolutely circle a dead field? And this horse um, that he beat, Young Philip, had four straight races underneath his belt. And all of them were in the like mid to high 70 buyers. Um, obviously, Tank Commander, the son of Warfront, has got a little... Uh, talent to him. Good ride by Joe Rocco, not taking any chances and just saying, you know what? I got the best horse. Let's go around them all. Yeah. Patience needed to be employed wow. with getting this horse to the races, but well worth the wait for that kind of performance first time out. Whew. Tank commander for Toby Keith, Dreamwalking Farms, Donnie Von Hemel, Joe Rocco Jr. Close out the car to Churchill Downs with a awesome very impressive what? firster. Wow, that was awesome. Back to Belmont, our sixth is coming up in here. A couple of first time starters down on the inside and the two and the three that are intriguing in this race. It's still though Candy Graham from Mongo, the 1A, the remaining half of the entry, who is favored at three to two. Showed speed and then backed up first time out at Saratoga against New York Red Maiden Special, so drops in class here. Yeah, you get Ira Ortiz Jr. and at Steve Massimson, they're about 11% together. You think they'd be a little bit higher, but this horse did show pretty good speed against a way better field. Um, Candy Graham from Mongo, obviously a Blazing Saddles um, reference, but I don't know what, six to five. You have the two and the three, both first time starters, um, and the seven, who ran against a good field. The unexpected money, tiny bit, I guess is the six, or is it the right money? Because if you look at the well, six's first two starts, you'd say, horse to beat, last start, what happened? Six should not have been 12 to one on the morning line. Uh, I, I just feel like this is more realistic. Nine okay. to two, don't you? Well, maybe the blinkers. Get signed up, get started real quick. Uh, $200 new member bonus when you use the promo code LIVE. And sign up at any track, any time, anywhere at NairaBets.com. Yeah, I just... Look, off those first two starts at Saratoga against better, this horse deserved to be one of the top players in the race. Yeah, so like we said, the horse got blinkers last time out on August 28th and ran awful. If you just draw a line through that, and that horse, if that race was never run, this horse would be your favorite probably, right? Or, yeah, one of the top yeah, two choices. Right? Yeah. Horse two back ran against Cleon Jones, who wound up being second in the funny side. Horse who beat Macho Boy, we're talking about the six first time out, ran a 72 buyer for Jason Service. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. 
Here comes our post parade. Approaching the six minute mark to post and here is Candy Graham for Mongo. <laughs> this horse didn't even take play first time out either. 12 to one in that debut. No, he didn't at all. Um, he showed a tiny bit of speed and sort of backed out of it, but it was a field of 10 and he stuck around for an awful long time. So maybe that's what the public's thinking. Maybe he'll be able to clear this field. And even though he's the 1A, he draws the complete outside here. What I write Ortiz Jr. aboard. This one gets the rail. Here's the first time starter for Todd Pletcher, son of Micromanage in the Rapoli Stable. This horse started training at Monmouth and then moved over to the Saratoga train track turf to the Saratoga training track. We'll see what happens today. Another first timer, Imperioso, who's nine to five, morning line, Mike Stidham, and a son of MC for $3,000, as you mentioned, purchased yeah. for. Comes in with a couple bullet drills, though, and the fact that Joel shows up, I think, is the key here. Stone Guitar, 22 to one, got on the dirt last out at Saratoga, did not show much. Contessa's other one in here is Kendrick Carmus will go to the six. Louis Reyes will be on Stone Guitar. This one is son of Bustin' Stones. Forever Wicked moves to a new barn for start number three after showing very limited ability first two tries. Yeah, tried blinkers last time, didn't help. Joey Martinez aboard, so get a little weight at 18 to one. Son of Mucho Macho Man, first two starts, makes him a major contender in this race. Now the blinkers come off after that one race experiment. Yeah, and you're wondering, did that one race experiment hurt him uh, at all, or were the blinkers off and the drop help him? The public thinks it's going to help him getting bet right now. Diane is impossible. We'll round out the field. The seven in here, Manny Franco, Rudy Rodriguez faced City Man in the debut at Saratoga. Race taken off the turf. City Man would win the funny side next out. Yeah, that, that was a loaded, loaded race. Now drops for 50 for Rudy Rodriguez. And um, an off the turf event first time, now straight turf. And a state bred made 50, so I, I think this horse fits in here. Let's check in, get Acacia Courtney's thoughts here for the sixth. Well, first time starter, the number three Imperioso is at nine to five on the morning line and four to one right now on the board. And interesting to see this horse, as Paul mentioned, coming in from Monmouth with some pretty sharp works and certainly does look fit for his debut. Now on the bottom side, there's not really much pedigree to speak of. The dam was one for 20. Her only win was on the turf. And so far, the siblings have not really done too much uh, on the track. There was one oh for 16, one one for 11, and then the other one, a two time turf winner. This gelding, he doesn't look like a turf horse at all. He's big, he might want a little bit longer distance than what he does have here. Does debut with blinkers on with Joel Rosario up, but he's super, super fit. Um, not, I'm not really quite sure what to make of him again because he does have to navigate the six furlongs on debut, but he looks well prepared. The two microscope I might like to see after a race or two. Uh, he does debut with blinkers on as well. He did wear them in some of his previous works. In fact, three works back, he was in company with Governor Morris, who was well bet and impressive on debut in Saratoga. He was no match for that other Pletcher runner. Um, and he did have to be really hard ass as, as soon as he got on the track by Jose Lascano giving him a couple kicks and taps to get him to have a bit more of an aggressive warm up. Again, would like to see one from this horse. But the 1A Candy Graham for Mongo. Well, the name is hysterical, and the horse looks sensational. I thought he had a real sprint look to him in his debut, a little bit on the smaller, kind of handier side, just maybe had a little bit too much to deal with as Munachi just completely uh, decimated that field on debut. And this horse was pretty up close to him as well. I think he's in the right spot today. And he's gained a lot of muscle as well. He's just really well within himself, warming up beautifully. The six macho boy I think is a bit of a wild card he has a lot of size to him he was very well covered up in those blinkers last time out and he just never looked comfortable in the stretch just kind of trying to look around and see what was around him sometimes the blinkers off can just allow horses to see their company given his size and he's a bit high-headed on the track would like to see him settle but I think that he's going to prefer those blinkers off and has gained some fitness now as well um, but it, they do have to get around candy Graham for Mongo I think the money's right on him guys so even money on Candy Graham from Mongo. As we approach the two-minute mark to post here on this Friday afternoon, looking forward to this big weekend coming up here at Belmont and all the coverage that we have for you this weekend from Woodbine, from Churchill Downs. It's going to be a lot of fun. It really is going to be a lot of fun. I was looking actually at the card. The pick five tomorrow at Woodbine is phenomenal. The pick five here is phenomenal. Obviously, you get the Northern Dancer. Um, you get a couple other stakes races along with the Woodbine Mile. Um, and the babies are out today 
on a Friday, and I'm sure they'll be out here on a Saturday too. Um, great racing throughout here, and we'll be having that obviously from north of the border. And also Churchill Downs has got a great card too. So this first timer for Todd Pletcher, not easy uh, to get the Five rail to first time out in her debut, and yeah, not getting a whole lot of attention. So that's certainly a negative sign with the board is telling you. Yeah, I guess so, right? I mean, debut and Lasix were poly stables. I know Mike likes to play a little bit. This horse started working at Monmouth, like I said. Then they brought the horse up to get him over the training track, over the turf, I guess. Um, they worked him one time over the turf course. Now if they tried to get him on the turf, I don't know. Then they went back to the training track, the Saratoga main track, main track, and then they went to the training track. This horse got a couple drills that are pretty fast out of the gate. Um, 40 um, seven and change out of the gate. So I don't know. Maybe the horse has a breathing issue. You never know. Um, and he's, the rider is off the two, Lescano, and hopefully everything is okay. Um, Imperioso I, for Stidham is another horse that's working bullets. I'm so. wondering if he felt something weird because this horse was not really getting away or anything. I wonder if Jose felt something amiss or if it's just maybe tightening up the saddle. No, you're right. Well, if you think he's taking it off. No, yeah. late scratch. I think Jose felt something wrong there. He's looking at behind there, and hopefully everything will be okay. Good call for you, Wolfie. Like you could tell, and now the horse is starting tacked up a little bit. Hopefully everything's okay here. All right, so microscope going back to the barn. And Jose maybe just felt something a little strange yeah. uh, in the giddy up or the how he's walking, and that's what the post parade's for and leading up going to that gate. If the jockeys feel anything amiss, they let this starting gate crew know, yeah. and that's exactly what Jose Lascano did. Yeah, take it, care of the horse. Yeah, you got to take care of the horse. And, and most times than not, when I talk to Gary, I've talked to Mig about this, Mike Smith, sometimes they know their horse. They work the horse in the morning, and then when they, they get him on the – um, in the afternoon, and they feel something different, they, they just they take more caution than anything. Like, listen, this doesn't feel right. Something's off here. I'm warming this horse up. Um, he doesn't want to go. Something. So hopefully everything's okay. You can see the horse looks okay going back to the barn, and maybe they, they'll assess him and then go from there. But obviously, Jose was like, no, horse was not um, doing well. wasn't taking money at the window. And now, if you have this horse in your pick fives, empires, all that kind of stuff, um, because we're all the way into the pick four, lay pick four. You're looking at the 1A right now, Candy Graham from Mongo. You need him to stay alive. Yeah, you will now get the, the post on favorite and four to five on the outside runner, Candy Graham from Mongo, Steve Asmussen, Irad Ortiz Jr. And by the way, now, real quick, the three gets the rail now. Does that make a difference for you? I, I don't really love playing rail runners, but if they break good, it's an advantage. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if they just take, I would think, yeah, they're just going to keep as is and leave that stall open. So now there's some, that, yeah. that could be. It could be worrisome because I, I sometimes they'll duck in. have that open space there yeah. now inside, which could be a negative because you know, Mig talks about it all the time, Richard Migliori on our show, that sometimes, especially first-time starters, they can run to open space. Yeah. And now you have that little inside cushion there. Well, I think what's going to happen here is Stone Guitar with Louis Reyes for Gary Contessa is dropping and showing a ton of speed. Is going to get sent. Blinkers are taking off Macho Boy, and I would think Kendrick Carmouche is going to try to come from off. So he's going to try with that old one-two punch. Uh, we'll see if he's faster than than the uh, the one A Candy Graham from Mongo, who will probably rock it right out of there. And I would think the seven should show some speed too, taking some money now. So. The, the interesting horse is Imperioso. I really don't know what to expect. Horse has been running bullets at Monmouth Park. Michael Stenham, um debuts this horse with Lasix. Like you were saying, they only paid three thousand dollars out of an expelled mare. This went for Benjamin, uh, Benjamin Trask. But the fact that Joel Rosario shows up, hmm, I'd beware the way he's riding too. He's having a tremendous start yeah. to this Belmont Fall Meet. He's got eight wins. He's Currently in third, of course, the monster day today for Manny Franco yeah, has right? tied him with Jose Lascano, who had the four-win day yesterday. Yeah. Uh, if you just joined us, Manny won the first four races of the day. Um, and he's on the seven here, who I think is not without a shot here at seven to two, even though you know, you're facing an, an even money favorite. But Mr. Dub knows what they're doing, and Rudy Robb and, and Mr. Dub, they're very, very good together at connections. And this is a horse that's dropping also that has speed. 
Even money on Candy Graham from Mongo, the 1A. Outside post here, start number two and a drop down in class for the 1A. And again, Ooh. late oh, no, scratch no. of the two microscope. Now we have another rider off a of horse here, Luis yeah. Reyes on stone guitar. Yeah, stone guitar starting to act up. You see Louis just a tiny bit. Sometimes he goes a little giddy up in his, uh, you know, trying to jog it off. Um, yeah, as soon as they see one horse maybe act up, the two had not act up, hopefully everything goes smooth from here on out. And I, now Louis going, well, you know what, I'm going to go to the gate and show the horse the gate, and hopefully Stone Guitar will, will behave. And they got him behind the gate right now, and he's not really having any of it right now. Well, he's gonna let the, yeah, Louis going to let the starting gate crew do their thing. Stone Guitar. That a boy, get in there. Gets right up to it and saying, what is this again? <laughs> He's done it twice before, but a little skittish right now. He's having some issues right now. He just wants to get in the gate, and then I wonder if Louie's going to sit on top of the gate and wait because sometimes you don't want to got him in. So sometimes you don't want to get right on top of him, and then he's hopefully he'll stay still, and all the other uh, Colts and Geldings can get in there without any incident here. So he's in line. Candy Graham from Mongo, outside post for the 1A. Six to five now. It's gone up a little bit. Is your favorite? We send it upstairs for the call here of the six from Belmont to the voice of New York Racing. Here's Larry Colmus. Just a couple left to load here as Diane's Impossible is about to move into the starting gate under Manny Franco. Looking for winner number five today. Diane's Impossible. Going in, and one left to load, and that's the favorite, Candy Graham for Mongo, who steps forward and goes in, and they're all in line. They're off. Candy Graham for Mongo. Out sharply for the front. Macho Boy goes to, and Stone Guitar. So it's these three out for the early lead together. Five lengths ahead of Diane's Impossible, Forever Wicked, and a very slow start for Imperioso, who's about 15, 16 lengths behind as they speed past the half-mile pole, where it is Macho Boy, the leader, Candy Graham from Mongo, second, 22.51, that opening quarter mile. Stone Guitar is backed off of them, five lengths off the lead. It's another four lengths more to Forever Wicked, racing on the inside of Diane's Impossible as they make their way around the turn, and Imperioso is being eased up out of the race here. So they make their way to the top of the stretch, and Candy Graham for Mongo blazes up on the outside and takes over the lead as they turn for home. A 46.16 half, and it's Candy Graham for Mongo on top by a length and a half. Macho Boy on the inside is second, and it's five links back to Diane's Impossible in third. Passing the 16th pole, and it is Candy Graham for Mongo. Coming home a winner, and Forever Wicked got second. And that was Diane's Impossible in Macho Boy. Candy Graham for Mongo with the victory. Imperioso, the first time starter, didn't break well. Eased out of the race in here. And this horse sitting right behind Macho Boy and aggressive Kendra Carmouche. And out of the turn takes over. I'll tell you what, Kendra Carmouche is the man, isn't he? You thought Stone Guitar was the horse that was going to go to the front end. No, it was Macho Boy and Kendra Carmouche tried to steal this race. But Candy Graham for Mongo was just well, man. Steve Asmussen's second time. That's usually his danger zone. How about the five in here, Forever Wicked? 25 to 1 after the scratch. Great, great ride by Joey Martinez. He had saved a ton of ground on the rail and swung this horse out in a really nice second here. And then the seven, uh, Dan's Impossible, uh, got the job done. You're right about Imperioso. Broke, broke very sluggish at Greg and just was not interested. Second time out, dropping class. Candy Grant for Mongo runs much better here at Belmont. Irad Ortiz Jr. aboard for the win. Trained by Steve Asmus and six to five favorite with a victory here in the sixth. We'll be back with prices set up the seventh when we come back.
medication, no problem. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track, on every screen, every, screen. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. Use promo code TRYRTN for a five-day free trial. Mastery retired undefeated, winning his four starts by a combined 20 lengths. A six-figure September sale purchase, he won impressively in his two-year-old debut at Santa Anita. From there, he captured the grade three Bob Hope Stakes and completed his juvenile campaign with a dominant performance in the grade one Los Alamitos Futurity. At three, the top-rated son of Candy Ride sizzled in the San Felipe. Now his much-anticipated first crop has arrived. Mastery, standing at Claiborne Farm. Back on America's Day at the races, Candy Graham from Mongo, son of Majestic City, drops in class, spoofs from Saratoga to Belmont, and gets the win with Irad Ortiz Jr. Yeah, congratulations. Like you said, Majestic City had a super saver mare to the nines and got the job done today. Now one for two lifetime, like I said, forever wicked. Very nice second. That exacta comes back okay. The pick three to start your late pick five, a little short, but you still got a couple races to maybe get a number. Let's go to the winner's circle to Acacia Courtney. Greg, thank you. I'm standing by with winning jockey Irad Ortiz aboard Candy Graham for Mongo. And this horse pretty impressive in his second start, having that experience under his belt already. He improved from the first time. You know, first time you never know. And was a little green probably. And today he, everything went perfect for him. He sits right there. He relaxed. When I asked him, he was there for me. It seemed like you warmed up really nicely on the track, too. As you were getting him ready for the race, what were you feeling? Were you pretty confident heading into the gate? He was feeling pretty good. Going to the gate, he was pretty sharp. Uh, I jogged for a little while, and he felt really good. And when he, we break out of there, he break in front of everyone. So I just, you know, I just was a passenger today, I think. And when you have two-year-olds, too, they react to each other. There was a little bit of a delay at the gate, some of them not wanting to load. How's, how was yours acting, and how do you keep them with their mind on business at that point? He was acting really good. I mean, we had, like, two horses probably with problems behind the gate, New York bred, second, uh, two-year-olds. So, I mean, he was, I just keep it with the pony and keep it walk, so keep it relaxed, try to keep, keep it away from that. So don't even think about that, and he just, he don't do anything wrong. He just get into the gate, and he pff, break good. An impressive finish from him. Great ride. Thanks, I ride. Thank you. That's all it is, Greg. Trying to keep them with their minds on business, and sometimes it's just a matter of keeping them relaxed. And I ride Ortiz, always a good horseman behind the gate as well. I feel like this meet's officially underway now that, that we have the uh, Ortiz sighting. Yeah, we have one Ortiz <laughs> sighting. Jose right now at Churchill Downs. Well, uh, he's winning races, but I ride uh, um, saying hi to the fans and always giving kisses. Um, but yeah, it seems like the meet has started and there's the late pick five follow along pretty good pool and My sassy Sarah got bet late, but I think coffee crush is gonna play a little bit bigger than that 790 so um, What a performance by coffee crush that one for Sophie Flay Bobby Flay's daughter Incredibly fast time wow. in that performance and to have more left in the tank in the stretch propelling that's that been the tail performance too. of the day Propelling that tail down the stretch. Yeah. <laughs> Seventh at Belmont's on the inner turf here. Six furlongs. $100,000 optional claiming race. JC's shooting star. She's a seven-year-old mare now. She's won three times on this Belmont turf before. And she has won sprinting on turf on a couple of occasions, including winning against allowance optional 80 last year when she beat Firekey. Yeah, and her last one wasn't that bad. Even, you know, she was 8-8. Eight eight, um when she broke and, and she got a pretty fast pace to run into in the crest but that was a really tough field uh, now she's in against her friends and i think she's got a shot here coming up this weekend grade one woodbine mile we will have live coverage on saturday afternoon is one of the most prestigious races in the country and a race that has been so pivotal to success in the breeders cup mile this is a look at the field that will line up in the race and Eight to five, morning line favorite, the four-year-old Philly. Got Stormy off a week's rest, went into the grade one four-star Dave, facing the boys, and she didn't just beat them, she destroyed that group. 
Yeah, she's just been a different filly um, since she's been four. Um, the gen it started in the Jenny Wiley. She ran against Rushing Fall. Uh, she didn't have the best trips to that day. Um, and then they just started to just, she started getting better. And then since he brought her back in August, these two races, and then the four-star Dave, this was just a tour de force. And I just don't see anybody beating her at all. I mean, and she's already had won a race at Woodbine. She's carrying seven more pounds than she did in the four-star Dave. Keep that in mind. Meanwhile, O'Cullen, he was off for over a year. He's come back. He's won back-to-back -back starts, two for two for Kieran McLaughlin, who won this race back in 2007 with Shakespeare. Yeah, and he, you got to give credit to Kieran. He's done such a great job. This horse hadn't raced since May 5th of 2018. Came back, uh, won an optional claimer, uh, 100,000, and then the lure by a nose. And great job by Louis Saez and a great job by Kieran McLaughlin. And I think it's time the son of Hearts to try to get. He was almost won the four Marcy at, in that grade three, and now trying to get that graded stakes win. And maybe it's a chance, because he's in good form. Yeah, he's in the best form of his career. Yeah. And they, they've had to be patient with him for a while, went to the bench. Always has shown a lot of ability on turf. Yeah. But this might be a horse who's just kind of starting to come into his own. Yeah, and he's the kind of horse, too, when you look at his PPs, he's run well at Belmont. And again, I don't want to keep comparing Belmont to Woodbine, but it's very, very similar. It has the wide turns and the wide stretch. And it's a one-turn mile now. This is the uh, same thing you get here at Belmont. So the horse at Belmont usually transfer well there. That's why I think Lucayan's a horse that does have a shot in there. But got Stormy. That little girl can run. Yes, she can. You also have the Woodbine Wonder, Silent Poet. And wow, has he been good. Five for seven at Woodbine. Only two defeats have been two second place performances. He comes in having one back-to-back -back starts, including his first ever try in group company. He won the group to play the king. Yeah, and they gave him no love in the play the king. This is usually the precursor to the Woodbine Mile. And you got to love the way he did it. Sat, sat behind horses. Um, and it wasn't a fluke win. Sometimes when horses get on the turf for the first time in a long time, He's the kind of horse that usually went into the front end. He's now four, and since they've gelded him in 2019, he has been a different animal. I think he is a major player in this race. He will not be 15 to one. He's the house horse there, as in not owned by the owner, but still one of the, the horses that I think that's got a good shot to maybe upset the apple cart if God Stormy brings her sea game. And there is synchrony. He, too, owns a victory over the Woodbine Turf course when he won the King Edward Group 2 back in late June. Trained by Mike Stidham, seven-time winner of over 780,000 on turf. Yeah, and the King Edward, this was a great effort, but they went very, very fast, 109 and change, and he came home. This was a Castellano aboard. Flavian Pratt will be aboard for Pin Oak Stable. This horse for Michael Stidham has been working well with the Fairhill, Fairhill Training Center. I just don't know if he's good enough. He's going to need pace to run into, though. He wasn't that far away from Bricks and Mortar no. when they faced each other. And, and we're leaving out Raging Bull. I mean, pretty good uh, rendition of the Wed by Mile, like it always is. And you yeah, give you Raging Bull Jansimar. a shot in the rematch with God Stormy? I just can't. I just can't. I know you like Raging Bull more than no, I do. I, I like God no, Stormy. You, do. you like Raging Bull. Be honest. No, I mentioned to Be you earlier. I mentioned to you earlier got a, a better number than God Stormy in that four star day, but I. I, I, I use what I saw, and I, I like Hot Stormy. I think she's the one to beat, no question. Being honest with you. Okay. We're going to take a break. We got more coming I'll up from Churchill Downs. The break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on with you. <laughs> I'm not trying to hide anything from you. Uh, Iroquois, Pocahontas, we're going to preview the boys. Dennis's moment. One of the most highly anticipated uh, stakes debuts we're going to see yeah. coming up from that runner. We'll talk about it next. Anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Yeah. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn to the lead for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. You know, I think Run Happy has a lot of things going for him. Obviously, he's been very respected, and and to you know to give people further incentive to buy them for where they can take an offspring, run it, and if they win, they're going to get a hundred thousand dollar bonus for each Run Happy they have. You know, it, it's a it's another selling point from our perspective that really helps us promote the horses that we're that we're representing and we're selling. 
Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. It's America's original sport, and no one covers it better than AmericasBestRacing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle, the best races, horses, and destination venues, cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. AmericasBestRacing.net is a sport for you. Live it, love it, bet it. That time at Oaklawn when a home run made for a big night. Bet on your favorite teams at Oaklawn's new race and sports book. Oaklawn, a new level of action, a new level of excitement. The thermal spring waters our city is named after are known for their legendary healing properties. Their thirst quenching properties are pretty nice too. Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's different here. Come see why. Back on America's Day at the races. We have the seventh race coming up, approaching the 11 minute mark to post. Six furlongs, inner turf. For those sticking with us, paddock report coming up in a moment. Greg Wolf, Paul LaDuca, Acacia Hi, Courtney. Hi, Paul, with you on this Friday the 13th. Did you know it was Friday the 13th? I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I didn't think you did. Wow. What are you doing tonight? You're going to watch a little Jason? Um, No. Okay. Um, I can't do those. What movies. is tonight? Oh, tonight is Syndergaard versus Clayton Kershaw. So I'll watch the Mets and Dodgers tonight. Okay. Is that okay? Well, we got, we got plenty to bring you before we get there. We still have two races to come here today. We have a paddock report coming up right now for the seventh. Let's check in with Acacia Courtney. Greg, thank you. And we'll start with the number two factor of one for trainer Christophe Clement. And you might have noticed an equipment change on this horse. Bar shoes were worn last time and will be off today. And just to explain a little bit of the significance of exactly what a bar shoe is, I think most people are familiar with the general shape of a regular horseshoe. Uh, but a bar shoe is fully covered like this. This would be the traditional bar shoe look as to what uh, a horse might have. Maybe that just gives them a little bit more coverage. This can actually increase the surface area of the foot by about 25%. So some horses that have a little bit more fragile feet, um, maybe they have some slight injury or bruising, this will help them by just, again, giving a little bit more surface area. An egg bar shoe is like this, which will be more of an egg shape. And again, that's for horses that maybe have just a, a little bit more strain in some of the hinder legs. But this is all for safety and just, again, to give them more surface area and more coverage. Factor of one, being a gray she sometimes with those grays have a little bit more fragile feet as they do tend to be lighter in color as well she also races with cotton in her ears she's a little bit of a trickier horse as you see she is with the pony in here in the paddock as is typical of her but bar shoes are off today she does have a traditional horseshoe shape uh, or the traditional horseshoe as we're familiar with so that is why it's significant to note that they are off this afternoon she's always been consistent and maybe if some of those foot issues that have plagued her have been resolved, that's a benefit for her this afternoon. Looking at a couple of others in here, though, the morning line favorite, the five, JC Shooting Star, switching back to the turf. She is a good-sized seven-year-old mare. She's a three-time winner here at Belmont. She's raced uh, 46 times in her lifetime, and she's still carrying herself very well, good in her fitness, and she has a little bit more of a turfy hoof as far as her um, but winds do go the majority of her wins have come on this surface. This might be her preferred surface. She's a little bit quiet here in the paddock. And I think that this race is a little bit wide more wide open than just her, but no knocking what she's done so far on the racetrack. The one that gets the nod from me here in the paddock is the 1A Booze. I absolutely love what I'm seeing from this five-year-old mare who her three races off the layoff and with Jorge Duarte Jr., who does a great job, have been solid. She did have some traffic trouble last time out at Laurel. And this will be uh, her first start here in New York in a while. But she's faced really good company. Her first race off the, the layoff at Laurel was behind Minute to Stardom, who came back to win the grade two honorable miss with a 94 buyer the next time out. She's great in her coat. She's on her toes, really good energy in here. Um, so uh, giving a slight nod to the 1A booze here in the paddock. 
Keisha, thanks. Booze. By the way. Booze. Oh. What, I'm sorry, what are you doing? I like the one, booze. I thought booze, the, the 1A who's 5-1, to one, was the horse to beat in the race. Uh, a little interesting, that horse is 5-1 to one in this race. Get signed up, get started. $200 new member bonus when you play with Naira Bets. Use the promo code LIVE at sign up. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. By the way, Casey was talking about bar shoes. Did you know, so we have the Woodbine Mile this weekend. Okay. Lawada's Anima won it back in 2005. Went into the Breeders' Cup mile the morning of the race. They discovered his feet, they were too sore to remove his training bar shoes. So he'd have to compete without racing plates. So sore feet, didn't have the right shoes on, outside post, still managed to run second. Wow. To Artie Schiller, who beat him. Wow. That's amazing. Now you wonder why he won the, when his feet were right, he, he, he sired he was, a horse. He was incredible. Yeah. Wow. So, you and I agree here. Look, our 7-5 to five favorite, J.C. Shooting Star, Aye. she's seven years old now. Obviously, and you would expect that, probably lost a step from, from when she's at her best. But we mentioned last year she beat a uh, very decent runner named Fire Key, who's a good turf sprinter. Yeah. Does she still have the ability to beat a couple young guns, and not necessarily young guns, but factor of one, four-year-old filly, Booze, she's a five-year-old mare, but I think coming in sharper than anyone. Yeah, and, and Booze has had a couple of trouble lines, at least the last two, and if you go and look back uh, when she ran here at Belmont, one of the best com comic line, uh, lines I've seen, some traffic, S-U-M, maybe he was thinking the sum of the equation was there was a lot of traffic, maybe that's what they were thinking, the, the chart caller, but uh, Lescano was aboard that day, so I think the 1A is live, and there you see her. But I can see why they're falling for JC's shooting star, because you know what? A lot of these Phillies and Mares don't really love to win, and she's got the most wins. Co-meet leading rider, Jose Lescano. He had that four-win day yesterday with the first four on the card. He's on booze, comes in from Laurel. Yeah, and, you know, six furlongs could be maybe the key here. I don't know. The one race... Um, they ran 106 and four. Epin Forrest won that race. So she was tracking. She just couldn't go that fast. But she's a five year old mare that I think's got a big shot at nine to two. Factor of one. Now, she has actually won a couple of a, a couple of times at six and a half. That's that down the hill turf course at Santa Anita. So you're not concerned about the six furlongs here? Um, the downhill at Santa Anita going six and a half is really different because you go down the hill for the first three furlongs. Doug O'Neill always told me you only run for like three and a half furlongs. So we'll see what happens here. I'm surprised she's nine to five. First time on turf for filibustin. She's been very quick on dirt. She has Kendrick Carmouche, speed rider. Yeah, she's fast, fast, fast. She's even fast in the morning. So uh, Mare by Busting Stones, look for her early. Here's the seven-year-old Mare, JC shooting star. She needs the four to go early and the two to go early. She needs a lot of pace. Manny Franco looking for number five on J.C. Shooting Star. Here's super striking, Irad Ortiz Jr. Yeah, you know, this horse way back when ran the Christy Cat and had a lot of trouble. I think a difficult horse to ride, and now back to sprinting, and Irad looking for back-to-back -back Ws. Three starts at Belmont for super striking has not hit the board, although one of those was in the Pebbles on a soft turf. Maybe can throw that one out. Another one was in the Christy Cat in a stakes race. I like the, the race two back at Prescott, a six and a half furlong race, not a bad race, a 73 buyer. The other six furlong race was not bad. If I ride can keep this horse within striking distance, she might kick home nicely. So JC shooting star, seven to five favorite. Let's take a look at her in action back on June the 15th, even though this was on dirt. Yeah, she runs second in the Dancing Renee, and this is probably what she's going to do on turf. Same thing. The problem is sometimes it's it's, it's harder to do. Now, it, she runs up into a, a nice little second here, um, and she's going to need that same kind of pace, but we'll see what happens. She yeah, was actually third that day, and we might have had the right horse, uh, wrong horse uh, highlighted there, but she's up for the $100,000 tag. You know she's the only horse in here that's up for a tag. Now she's a $636,000 earner. Would you pay 100000 for her to be a broodmare? You're saying you would? It's not. I mean, like, it's not out of the, out of the world, right? Three to two on JC's shooting star, the seven-year-old mare. Let's go downstairs to Acacia. 
Greg, thank you. I'm joined by trainer Jorge Duarte Jr., who has the 1A Boos, who's had three races off that layoff. How has she been doing coming into this race? She's had three solid performances so far. Yeah, she's doing very good this year. Uh, I think she appreciates the extra ground here in Belmont, the three quarters, which she kind of closed in lower and she needed a little more. So hopefully this fits her. Uh, she faced some good company at Laurel as well, including Minute to Stardom. Does that give you a little bit more confidence coming in here? It's a small, a small field, but a, a solid one as well. Yes, those races at Laurel were, you know, salty enough. But I think the ground will help her. It's firm, and she likes that, and the extra ground, the three quarters. So we're looking forward to it. And you were telling me you have the Colton Training Center in New Jersey. How have you uh, seen your horses just in general faring since you took over with Alan Goldberg uh, retiring? It's going smooth. The, the boss is still racing manager. He's kind of walking me through everything. Uh, we've been having a good summer, especially at Moment. So uh, it's been going smooth, you know, thank God. Been doing a fantastic job with the operation. Uh, nice to see you up here in New York. Thank you, Akashi. Thank you. And Greg, don't uh, don't take a uh, don't overlook booze as it might be your hunch bet on Friday the 13th. But Jorge Duarte Jr. doing a great job with the Colts Neck operation. It's also a hunch play for Polly. <laughs> Just kidding, buddy. Thank you, I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> booze. That was the best thing I'd have in my name, La Duca. Um, I was looking at last night watching the game, um, the Carolina game, Luke Keekley. It's Luke. You don't know if you're getting booed, yeah. so they used to call me Duke. So I used to like Duke. I couldn't yeah. know if I was getting booed or not. So it's What's actually okay to have a name that sort of rhymes with boo yeah. because you never know if they're booing you or not. What city was the roughest on you? Oh, it's not even close. It's Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah, but you learn to love them, so they hit you in the head with batteries. But probably it feeds your your oh, gets you going, yeah. right? But it is the one place. My father is an old school Italian, and he doesn't take a lot if you can understand what I'm saying. That's the only stadium my father had to walk out of. Mm. And a lot of people forget, old veteran stadium had a jail and a judge yeah. below it. It was the only yeah. stadium that did. And uh, we used to go down there and check him out every once in a while. And, yeah, it had a jail in there. And, guys, uh, if you acted up during the game, and there would be at least one or two fights every Philly game I played in. Rough city, yeah. no question. They Couldn't take bring your feelings to that ballpark. Extremely seriously. Yes. Favorite has become the two in here. So nine to five factor of one who's going to have the rail in this race. Are you surprised? Um, we know Filibustin, the four, has to try and go, right? But we don't know if that dirt speed is going to transfer to turf. That's going to be the key. If the four does not go, is the two gone in here? Because if that's the case, yeah, it could happen. Factor of one could just be gone. She's very fast. But she's three for 19. Filibustin, never been on the turf, but she's shown some wicked speed. Uh, super striking's come out of long races. And let's be honest, Booze, the 1A and the 5, they're just going to come from out of it. The 6 is the interesting horse. Can the 6 sit in the middle? Can Irad get him to s get her to sit in the middle of these? Because at 6, I can't believe she's 6 to 1. That's a joke. She should not be 6-1. to one. Yeah, I th think she definitely has more ability than she's being given credit for. It is it people looking at maybe that Belmont turf record saying three starts hasn't hit the board? There's excuses for those starts, and she hasn't had a lot of opportunities to really sprint well, on the one turf. One of them was in the Christie Cat, and she was only two lengths yeah. out of there. Broadway run would be uh, one to five in this place, in this, in this spot. Um, the two-factor of one, I, I think the public's thinking, okay, she's just going to get away from these, and she could if Philip Buston doesn't – Get out of there. But again, look who's riding filibustin. Kendrick Carmouche. That's why we think, yeah, I mean, you th think this four is going to try and go, but we just don't know if that dirt speed, if she's going to be as quick on turf. That's not always the case. Comes in with a bullet drill. Three for a long drill, too. So you would have to think there's intent there to say, <laughs> we want this filly to show speed, or five-year-old mare to show speed. But by the way, for filibustin, damn sweet aloha. This is her first ever offspring to even try turf. Yes, yeah, so you don't know, but she's shown speed everywhere she's gone. In the Gregory Sackle barn, in the in Gary Catessa barn, she's shown speed in the morning. Back to back to back, yes, three straight bullet drills, one at five for only, like Greg was saying, back to back 35 and one. So she should be quick out of there, but we always say dirt speed is not the same as turf speed, but if it is today, then she might be able to put factor one into the ground. But here's the other thing about factor one. We talked about this with the two. Does she need the lead to win at six furlongs? You know, can the four go to the front end? She let her go. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to play out. I don't you know? think she has to have the – You talk, Yeah, I don't think the two has to have the lead okay. to win. 
then the four might get brave. The six is the wild card. Where does the six lay in this race? Because at six furlongs, I think she'll finish the race. But and where, how far back is she going to be? Still steady support for JC shooting star as well. Seven-year-old mare. Wow. The five in this spot. And look, you go back to that race July of last year at Belmont. She could repeat that. She probably wins here. I just don't know if she's the, the same. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I can't take six to five on her. She can win this race. I get it. One zillion percent. Um, I think the 1A is the horse to bet. Guys, I just think the 1A sits in a great spot. I know she doesn't love to win, but I just think the 1A, uh, that's who I would bet. That's all I'm, I'm with you, and I, I don't get five that she's one. on wow. the board at five to one. Wow. I don't know. Either do I. Jose Lizcano will be aboard. Boo's five-year-old mare, three-time winner on the turf. As we get set for the seventh, we send it upstairs to the voice of New York Racing for the call. Here's Larry Colmas. Last one to come up here is super striking. And they're all in line. Boos restless. Rider off of Boos here. Jose Lizcano has climbed off. Just trying to get everyone settled in the gate. Boos now joined once again by Lizcano, and we're just about set. They're off. And it's filibuster now sharply for the front. There goes Boos and Factor of 1-2. And it's these three that speed out from Super Striking and JC Shooting Star. So up the backstretch they go. Three of them line up. Factor of 1, Boos, and these two get away from filibuster. Kendrick Carmouche will let him do it and sit third a length and a half off of them. Super Striking is four and a half lengths off the lead. And the trailer is JC Shooting Star. A 21.1 opening quarter mile. They are winging up front. Around the far turn, factor of one and boost. And Philip Austin lays just off of them. Super striking with a good pace in front of her. Begins to move up. And she's only three lengths behind. And also gaining ground is JC Shooting Star who's going to come wide. They make their way to the top of the stretch, a 44.18 half mile, and Boos has gone up on the outside of Factor of One, but here come both Super Striking and J.C. Shooting Star, and Philip Austin goes to the rail. Here's J.C. Shooting Star on the far outside to the front. J.C. Shooting Star is going to give Manny Franco a five-win day. And then it was Super Striking and Boos, and a photo behind them between Factor of One and Filibuston. This turf course is playing fast today, 108 and three. JC shooting stars, seven-year-old Mare still got it, and so does Manny Franco. Fifth win on the afternoon for Manny. Yeah, I looked at you, when these horses were going at it at the front end, the five and the six were just sitting back there licking their chops. So I read Ortiz Jr. and Manny Franco, and another W for Manny. I thought actually super striking would get first run, and she actually did. But you got to give this from seven-year-old Mare by Miracle Man. She likes to win races, and wow, at nine to five, she'll get the job done. As the two went off as your favorite, just a bad favorite. I'm most surprised, actually, that Jose Lascano went after her early instead of laying off because the one, A, Booze ran giant to be part of that early pace and to actually just get out Bob basically here for second. She toyed with this field, right? I don't know about that. No? Maybe a little bit, but they went 21 and 1, and the 1A was right in the mix. It's of playing it. really fast, though. No, I get it. The 2 is a bad favorite. I mean, we saw, when, when we saw Coffee Crush win, she went 107 and change for six furlongs. That's true. JC Shooting Star, would you take her for 100,000 now? Yes, please. <laughs> Five today for Manny Franco. What a day he is having. Incredible. Teams up with David Donk, and that's neat to see. Seven-year-old mare, and she's still not just running. She's still winning and winning impressively. We'll be back. As a leading breeder, consigner, and buyer, the number one thing that I look for is that wow walk. 
And when Always Dreaming took two steps, I knew that that was exactly what he had. I think the walk is so important because it really tells the true athleticism of a horse. He's just that kind of mover, and you can spot it from a mile away. I'm Carrie Brogdon, and this season, I'm always dreaming. They're off. Bet the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn to the lead for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. Kentucky Derby winner, Orb. On the track, his runners have scored on both dirt and turf, including multiple stakes winner, Autumn Warrior, and Sipican Harbor winner of the grade one spinaway stakes at Saratoga. On the track, Orb continues to add winners. And in the sales ring, his two-year-olds have sold up to $250,000 in 2019. Classic winner, classic pedigree, Orb standing at Claiborne Farm. Back on America's Day at the Races, that young man, when we started today, was the third leading rider at the meet. He is now the leading rider at the <laughs> meet, all alone by himself. A five-win day for young Manny Franco. I need to know what it is. We always call the hat trick, the golden sombreros four. What's five? I guess it's a five-bagger, but congratulations. Like we talked about, the seven-year-old mare by Miracle Man and the quiet American mare, er, mare a mess, American Pastic, excuse me, not four for 14 lifetime. If you had that Grand Slam, $5.80 for you. JC, shooting star, seven-year-old mare with the win. Let's go downstairs to Acacia. I'm joined by winning trainer Dave Donk with this seven-year-old mare back to the turf, and she just keeps winning. What is it about her? She she just absolutely was impressive today. Um, yeah, it was a good spot for her today. Um, we finally, in the last year, finally got the right niche, and she wants to be a sprinter. Um, fortunately, she's done well in the dirt, uh, so... You know, kind of goes both ways, but she, I, I prefer her on the grass. We don't get many opportunities, um, but this was a good spot today. Coming into this race, uh, given the fact that maybe she had a little bit of dirty up form recently, how is your confidence level as uh, she has raced quite a few times, but she's still been consistent? Yeah, she's had a lot of starts. Um, you know, so she's been a really durable mare. Um, you know, she's a New York bred. We don't get many opportunities to sprint on the grass. So, uh, you know, we don't have that division for New York breds. Fortunately, she's been pretty good on the dirt this year. She won earlier in the year at Aqueduct, and she was uh, second maybe a couple times behind Linda's good filly. So that's probably where she'll end up next time back on the dirt with New York breds. Having that versatility, and, and now that she is seven, what's it like to have a mare like that in your barn, given how consistent she is? Yeah, you don't find many horses that'll run on both surfaces, so um, it's a lot of fun to have. Uh, you know, if it comes off, you're still going to run. Dave, thanks so much. Congratulations. Thanks, I appreciate it. JC's shooting star and start number 47, still getting the job done and doing it well, guys. Just a cool story that she's still going so strong as a seven-year-old mare, still being effective and, and beating some nice runners who have some quality about them, too. No, you're right. And another 50,000 or 40-some-odd thousand in her bank. She's getting close to almost 700,000. David's right. It's very hard to find somebody that can run on both. Um, she's one for 17 on the fast track, um, but she's five for 23. Maybe he'll start running her more on turf. And you can see now late pick five long has been pretty chalky but you can still if you can get a price in the last they're not bad and, and i have a feeling the one that you like is the one that i like too 11 letterman would that be because we talked about it earlier yeah but it's paying 900 dollars <laughs> to that horse and I think we're going to talk more shot. about letterman yeah. in a little bit okay. we're going to see the just yeah we we had recess yesterday who we showed had an absolutely brutal trip yeah. race this is the recess trip times 10 okay uh, like this horse, it. this trip was just unbelievable how, how rough it was. I'm going to tell you this, though. Five for Manny Franco today. Do not discount Kumar making his turf debut coming up here. We'll have the rail. Wow. We'll talk more about that coming up in a moment. What happens if you win six? What do they call that? <laughs> six bagger. <laughs> Iroquois, grade three over the weekend. We're going to show it to you live from Churchill Downs. Two-year-olds going a mile and a 16th, trying to book their ticket to the Breeders' Cup. 
juvenile and Dennis moment. Dale Roman, the son of Tiz now, lost the jockey in the debut and then did this second time out at Ellis Park, won by 19 plus lengths. Unbelievable effort. Yeah, it really was an unbelievable effort. Listen, I mean, like, like I said, you, you go in and the first time this horse runs at two and a half to one, everybody puts their money down and loses the jockey. And then this happens by 20 some odd lengths and runs a 90 some odd buyer. Going to be a handful, but, but you never know what's going to happen. That's only one career stop. Now it needs to stretch out around two turns, but has the pedigree, a son of Tiz now, um, out of a loose quality mare. Irad Ortiz Jr. will be aboard. Um, but after a 97 buyer and not running the first time, what do you really want to do with this horse? You really want to take a chance at a slope, at a low price with a lot of other horses here, like Rowdy Yates, like Scabbard, that have a couple races under their, be their belt. So sometimes these horses that run freaky efforts, they're tough reads. Uh, here's Dale Romans on that incredible maiden victory. When he ran down Ellis Park, I've never seen anything like that. I came out of the winter circle shivering for a maiden, and uh, I don't know that ever had a maiden's ever had that effect on me, or I've had this much pressure with a horse that's going into his uh, first race off his maiden win. <laughs> Eighteen and a quarter lengths makes you an uh, instant superstar, and uh, yeah, it was a lot different coming out of that winter circle than it was when we were headed down to Ellis Park. But so, he is truly a special horse. You know, the biggest thing with him is he's so smart. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever had a horse like him. He, he works. He works hard. He works fast. And he comes off the racetrack like he's never done anything. Like any athlete, the, the big gauge of how good they are, how easy things are for them is a recovery time. And he, I mean, he worked 58 4 before he got back to the barn. You couldn't tell he even worked. So he's just got some kind of system. Sounds like he's confident heading into uh, the Great at Stakes debut for Dennis Moment. He's going to take, take on Rowdy Yates, among others, who ran in the Ellis Park Juvenile. Got an 84 buyer to win is the favorite for Steve Asmussen. This is interesting because when you look at this horse, this horse won last time out, like you said, with Tyler Bays aboard. Ricardo Santana was up at Saratoga. He's keeping Tyler aboard. Um, this is the son of Morning Line. Now, Ricardo Santana... Goes to the other horse on the rail, zero mid uh, for Steve Asmussen, the other horse that ran in the Saratoga Special where Green Light Go and Noose come out of. So which one is a little bit better here, although Santana rides the other one? I would think Rowdy Yates ran very well and won last time with Tyler Bays, and the connections are probably saying, hey, let's leave him on this horse. He got along well with this Colt, and we'll try him in the Iroquois. This is not good. Jonathan Kinchin, he's going to be on the show tomorrow. Just texted me, said Dennis' moment, tell you he won't lose. He just said the same thing, and Yikes. you know what? He needs you to know learn what that means. He needs to learn how to group text. Group text, <laughs> so you can just send them both to us, JK. Love you. See you soon. And all your shirts, by the way. Uh, we're going to see him on the show tomorrow, joining us here in New York. But, yeah, we cannot wait to see Dennis' moment back in action off that. The biggest debut we've seen from a two-year-old. Well, not that. a debut, technically, because he lost his rider first time out. But big see, effort. But here's my problem is Dale's had the best horse ever the last four years. You know that, right? Everyone that debuts, they win. And one run second in the juvenile, that was his best horse. Then Keen Ice was his best. So just beware with Dennis's moment. I love you, JK. Grain of salt. All right, we'll be back. We're going to look at the superstars to run in the Woodbine Mile. We have live coverage on Saturday. We'll be back. Tom Durkin letting you know New York Reds start with an advantage. At the sales, buyers pay up to seven figures. And there's over $2 million in stakes money limited to New York sired horses in the New York Stallion Stakes Series, like the Park Avenue for three-year-old fillies. Duly minted wins it for fun. For fun and money. The winner's share generates an additional $55,000 from the New York Breeding Fund. Funny guys gonna do it. Funny guys win in the Times Square division generates the same money. So get with the program at nybreds.com. They're off. Bet the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Yeah. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn to the lead for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. What I like best about Run Happy is Sire, he showed so much brilliance to win the grade ones that he won, different racetracks, and he was competing against the best horses that made it look easy. 
when I first heard about the bonus, I thought it was good for everybody, buyer or seller, gets everybody on the same page, that there's a lot of enthusiasm with the horse already, and I think that just helps add to it. I think these run happy. The public already wants to like them. That's a great thing, and I think that's a little icing on the cake for the whole deal. Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track, on every screen, every, screen. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. Use promo code TRYRTN for a five-day free trial. You can say that Woodbine is a place where champions come to race and win. Court Vision and Robbie Alvarado. Court Vision, it's his day today. A wild finish. Right one, far outside, Tour Allure. Right one, Tour Allure. Courageous cat, Tour Allure. I think got it. A dazzling display. The path to the Breeders' Cup typically always runs through Woodbine. Court Vision gonna outrun a Tour Allure on the outside. Oh! Hit it together, too close to call, court vision, Tura 64 to 1. Yeah, I mean, I guess he exceeded the expectations of everyone in the crowd. He's one of those horses that comes to run and uh, he shows up every single dance and uh, he's, a, he's a special horse. Wise Dan, a jaw dropping performance to win the Rico Woodbine Mile. Wise Dan strikes the front, sticks his neck out. He wanted to win today and win it he will. Wise Dan, super impressive, Breeders' Cup Mile. Wise Dan won it. And he uh, launches a bid to be named Horse of the Year. Here he is, the titan of the turf, the sensational Wise Dan. Wise Dan's got him. Wise Dan, brilliant in the mile. Wow, Wise Dan making a bid for his second straight Horse of the Year title. Teppen is the horse everyone's talking about, the queen of the turf. Teppen has a five-length margin and deep stretch. Teppen has won the Breeders' Cup mile. Teppen, Teppen, Teppen. And she is going to make this her own personal playground. Teppen, Teppen going on to win the Rico Woodbine mile. It's an intriguing jockey's race, a fantastic visual spectacle. As they come for the lane, best part the centre. Tara Texas is over on the inside. World approval wins the Rico the wood by file by almost three lengths. World approval has the lead as they come down to the wire and he's pulling away late. And world approval does it in the Breeders' Cup mile. It has been such a tremendous stepping stone to the Breeders' Cup mile, but a prestigious race in its own right. Court Vision, we're going to win the Breeders' Cup mile. Tor Lore, Wise wow. Dan, Twice, Teppin, World Approval, all. Woodbine Mile winners who would go on to win the Breeders' Cup Mile. Yeah, you know what? I think it's a testing race. Wow, look at that list. Man, Prize, Dan Smiley, Skip Away, Roy De De Zenimo. Uh You're right, Court Vision. But why is Dan uh, in, in, in 132 and changing a canter? And here's this year's rendition. And it's a good one. God Stormy coming in with just a, a phenomenal effort in the four-star, Dave. And again, I keep pointing to... Carlos Santana, I can't remember the last time I've seen a, a guy look between his legs midway through stretch in a turf race with two Chad Brown horses um, behind him, Uni and Raging Bull. But she just had so much left in the tank. Now she has extra time. A lot of people are saying, okay, she's going to bounce to the moon. Well, why didn't she bounce to the moon after eight days after she had this effort? Um, and supposedly she's been training great. I just don't know how they're going to get to her the way she ran today. And she has a win at Woodbine, and you just saw a whole package of Teppin, trained by Mark Cassie. World Approval, trained by Mark Cassie. Who's got Stormy trained by? Mark Cassie, who uh, started to become famous at a track known as Woodbine. <laughs> <laughs> so you're sensing a pattern. Yes. Yeah, I, it's just, she ran so huge off that short layoff, there's the concern, but maybe she's just become a completely different Philly here as a four-year-old and coming to her own. That would appear uh, the case. And we'll see if she's anything close to what she was in that four-star day. If she's going to be a lot of fun to watch on Saturday. Loaded weekend stake schedule. Pebbles here at Belmont. We're going to bring you all these races coming up over the weekend. So we hope you join us. It's going to be sensational this Saturday and Sunday. Two things you need to do. Lord, load your account. You need to load it now and bet on this guy because he's looking for six. 
or load it for tomorrow. Manny Franco, can he close out the card with one more? Five win day for that young man. He's on board Kumar, 12 to one, trying turf for the first time in our finale coming up. He's got a lot of the physical traits that Run Happy stamp in his foals with. He's a, a big horse. He's very well balanced and he looks precocious and fast. He's got lots of bone, very correct, and a big walk, and, and very smart head to him. He's very intelligent, Colt. Temperament as well. My horse is a beautiful temperament. He lies down in the stall every day, and just a cool horse to be around. Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. What constitutes a promising stallion? Speed? He's still the fastest tappet ever around two turns. Pedigree? He's got the strength of the founding fathers, top and bottom. And he's passing that strength on. With two graded stakes winners and two TDN rising stars from his first crop, he's one of the leading freshman sires in the country. Constitution. He's the son of tappet we've all been waiting for. Warfront. This son of Danzig ranks among the world's elite sires. With grade one winners on dirt and turf and star performers both at home and abroad, Warfront's success as an international super sire is unmatched. Recent grade one winners include Omaha Beach and Preakness Stakes hero War of Will. In the sales ring, his $2.4 million sale topper at Keeneland September was the highest price yearling sold in North America last year. Warfront, standing at Claiborne Farm. You're watching America's Day at the Races on Fox Sports 2 and MSG Plus. Our post parade coming up here for our finale. On the card, and there is the man of the afternoon, Manny Franco. Five win days, now the leading rider at the meet after this wow. performance. Can he get number six? Kumar, first time on turf. Yeah, and a horse that on the bottom side does have a little bit of turf pedigree. On the top side, the intermissions can do a lot. So I would think they claim this horse with the idea to put him on turf. And I wouldn't put it past Manny. When you're riding hot, you're riding hot. Dull knife, 29 to one on the three. Luis Miranda off the claim. And this is a horse that dropped for Gary Barber and Todd Pletcher and now being bumped for 50. Tough horse to get to. Bourbon in May, major contender here at seven to two for Todd Pletcher. Yeah, Bourbon in September wouldn't be that awful either. Castellano sticks around for the last. Here's my Amagina, Gregory DePrima, son of Big Brown. Gregor DePrino won a race yesterday at a big price with Ruben Silvera in the irons. Louis Reyes will be in this long shot. Scores when he wants at night. A two, Joel Rosario beat a half length, had the lead in the stretch last start. That was on dirt at Delaware, but has some decent turf for him as well. You look at this horse, though, uh, 30 cents in the dollar lost, one at 40 cents in the dollar. So been a heavy favorite. So maybe this horse is a tiny bit um, a horse that you want to play a little bit against. Inscom comes in from the West Coast here now with Rob Attris, used to be with Simon Callahan, major player. I have a ton of respect for Rob. He's such a good trainer. But again, horses coming in from California on turf, I stay away from. This is supposed to be a very large animal here. Whiskey is my wine. Jorge Abreu, the one to beat. Well, you have Whiskey is my, my wine and Bourbon in May. So maybe those are the two hunch plays. A lord getting on turf for the first time. Orlando Noda does great things, but trying to take one from Chad Brown, good luck. Absolutely brutal trip from Letterman last time out. Still managed to get second. We're going to show you that trip in detail in a moment. Rider change, Eric Consell. Yeah, and this is a horse that needs to be taken back. Does not want to be on the front end, and I would think we'll be taken back today. You intrigued by running violence at all? Sam Jimenez, by the way, rider change. First time on turf, last start sprinting. Hit the board, ran third. Ran very well. I mean, considerably better than the horse had run before on dirt. But if you look the second career start, the son of violence has shown talent before. There's running violence that we're talking about. 34 to 1, second time on the grass. Closing sprinter in that turf debut. And then Shiny Copper Penny, we will see next. Also eligible, gets into this field here. Yeah. Who's 1 for 27, lifetime on turf. It is Friday the 13th. She does draw in, and she is the 13th. Ooh. Someone would get $5,600 if this son of sweet return would win, but wow. It's been a long time since drinks, although the one win was at Gulfstream Park going five furlongs. Now they're going a mile today. So here is Letterman for the James Bond barn. Let's go back to Saratoga. This was July 27th, the last start. And this horse was just 
very rank early on from that outside post. Well, Junior Alvarado obviously doesn't break well. He's obviously now going to try to get him to settle and get him over. He's like, no, I want to go. Now Junior's going to try to get him to, to get him over. Throwing that head around. And he's throwing his head around. He starts to climb a little bit because he's got horses in front of him. And there's no kickback. He's just being rank. And Junior is strong. He's doing everything he can to sort of keep him on the rail. And the horse just does not want any of it. And he's still being ranked. Can't get him to settle down. Head up high. And he finally stops. Now, he makes a move up the back stretch and just... Because Junior's like, I can't do anything about it. Do I go to the front end or not? Do I sit? Junior decides to sit because now he has some space to maybe take this horse inside to outside. And when he does, the horse still has a little bit left. Well, tried to find that running room down on the rail. There wasn't any, so then had to drop back. Then tries to make another run here and is going to get shut off again. And as right there has to shift to outside again. That broke the horse's momentum in the stretch. Yeah, and just a little greenness. But you got to love that the horse is... is Still trying and trying to get to the winner. I mean, you look, nobody else is really running on, but you can see Junior's finally just dead tired. I mean, his biceps had to be hurting by um, that time. All kinds of problems. Yeah, so now that's the worry in here because now you have Cancel aboard. Junior has dealt with this horse, obviously difficult to ride. Now is Eric going to be able to handle her? against Eric, is this the first time on the horse? Is Can he going to be able to handle her, uh, handle him? And is he going to keep him out of trouble being in the 11 hole? Six to one right now on Letterman off that second place performance for 30 non winners of two at Saratoga. Let's go track side check in with Acacia Courtney. Greg, thank you. And you were talking about how maybe whiskey is my wine and bourbon in May may be the hunch plays in here. And bourbon in May, I think, is getting the chance to do probably what he really wants, and that's go a longer distance. He came off of a roughly seven-month layoff last time out at Saratoga, and I had written down that he... The, the five and a half was just too short for him. And I think that that really showed in his performance that actually did turn out to be a very, very fast race with Karatari uh, winning and just there was never any challenge there. So I like him second off the bench, getting a drop in class as well. The seven score when he wants, this could be a little bit of an interesting one at a bit of a price, taking a drop in class and getting back to the turf. I've seen some speed be very good on the turf today as well. And he's got some speed and some races on the go back and picking up Joel Rosario though he is eight starts a win and four seconds in his uh, lifetime it starts the eight in scum picking up john velasquez and first time out for rob Atris. this horse was very much on his toes um i was i was intrigued by him he's a big good looking type of horse the son of distorted humor um maybe showing a little bit more nervous energy than i'd like before the race but a very intriguing one indeed and the nine whiskey is my wine he's the horse to beat a very good race that he does come out of really well built behind the saddle we'll see if he can repeat that nice maiden win that he did have two starts back but i'm going to take bourbon and may getting back to his preferred distance acacia thanks and there is bourbon and may moving in and i got you know on inscom the the five the eight i should say this horse had huge efforts out in southern california ran beat just two lengths in the grade three la jolla behind river Boyne. he was only beat a length to that horse in the pasadena running second he hit some big numbers he ran back in Southern yeah. California. If he can come close to that, he's going to be very tough here. Yeah, he is. And like I said, I have dealt much respect for Rob Outers. He's such a good trainer. Again, I just like to play against these horses because sometimes they get over bet. And the mm -hmm. nine whiskey is my wine is the one that's getting over bet right now. I think the eight, you might be the play. But again, Letterman, I'll take eight to one. I'm with you, buddy. Send it upstairs to the Voice of New York Racing for the nightcap. Here's Lori Colmas. Shiny Copper Penny will be the last one to step forward here. And they're all in line. They're off. And it is Shiny Copper Penny on the far outside and Letterman showing some early speed and joined on the inside by Dull Knife, who's up with the pacemakers too. And then it's Inskim, Bourbon and May to the inside, a length and a half back to Allure. Whiskey is my wine is next. Then it scores when he wants on the inside of running violence. At the back of the field are Kumar and the trailer Mayam and Jenna. So it is Letterman making the pace here under Eric Consell. Went 23.23 for this opening quarter mile and leads the way by a length and a half. 
And then it's Dull Knife on the inside. Second, Inscom is third by another length and a half to Shiny Copper Penny. Bourbon and May follows in fifth with five lengths to make up at this stage. And then a Lord. Whiskey is My Wine is eight lengths behind as the field heads for the far turn here. And they're followed by Running Violence. Miami and Jenna to the outside. And then it's Kumar and scores when he wants. So they make their way around the turn, 46.77 that half mile for front-running Letterman, who continues to lead the way a half a length. Inskim is running in second, then Shiny Copper Penny third on the outside. They're followed by a ground-saving Dull Knife, who's three lengths off the lead. Lord is next. In behind them is Bourbon and May, and cutting the corner is Scores When He Wants, who's trying to get involved and has running room at the rail as they come to the final furlong. Whiskey is my wine, putting in a bid, too. In the meanwhile, it's Inskim who has taken the lead. Inskim has taken over. Letterman on the inside is second. Finishing well is Bourbon and May with a late bid on the outside. Inskim, Bourbon and May. Inskim by a neck. Bourbon and May was second. Whiskey is my wine was third, and Kumar came on fourth. Inskum with the win, late bet down to seven to two in here, gets the second win of his career. Yeah, I was wrong here. I really didn't love this horse 0 for 9 the last few years, but like I said, Rob Atrus knows exactly what he's doing. He put this horse in the perfect spot, and you had pointed out this horse had run in the Pasadena and a couple other uh, uh, spots, and Johnny V always had the 11 um, measure in here, and we, we said Letterman needed a target, but I think Eric Cancel did the right thing because what are you going to do? The horse ran off a little bit on Junior last time, and the horse got an easy lead, but just had no punch towards the end. And uh, Berman and May is going to check in second. But Inscombe, clear winner here in about 133 and change. The seven on the rail had to stop late um, at, at four to one. Maybe that's a horse you want to look back. But how about Manny Franco and Kumar actually liking the turf first time Completing out? Completing the superfecta. Yeah. yeah, running fourth in there, Kumar, with Manny Franco who had the five win day. But in the nightcap, it's John Velasquez, Rob Atris. Horse coming from the West Coast and liking things here in New York. Inscom wins at 7-2 to two to close out our Friday afternoon card. We'll be back with the prices from the 8th at Belmont and more from what's ahead this weekend when we return on America's Day at the Races. Into the final furlong of the Claiborne Breeders' Futurity and Classic Empire wins it in style. Here's the minor Classic Empire. He's a champion two-year-old. Here's the champ Classic Empire. Classic Empire. Eclipse champion Blaine was considered by many as the breakout stallion of 2018. His top runners included grade one winner and Eclipse Award finalist Marley's Freedom, plus grade one winner Fault, and graded stakes winners Moral, Beyond Blaine, Miss Kentucky, and Blaine. This year, his two-year-olds have sold up to $700,000. Outstanding results, outstanding value. Blaine, standing at Cleveland Farm. The horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Vets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Vets app. Yeah. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn with the length of the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaVets.com. Run Happy was a really nice racehorse. The biggest attribute that I see about him is the way he stamps his folds. You know, they got big, pretty walks on them. They got good hips and shoulders. Very pretty to look at. And you know, a real strong hind leg. You know, everything that you're looking for as a racehorse, you know, that, that's what impresses me. Run Happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Back at America's Day at the Races, Inscom, four-year-old by Distorted Humor, had been running some really big efforts out on the West Coast. A couple of near misses in Stakes Company, including in Graded Stakes Company. 
Ships here east now with Rob Atris and gets the job done here in the eighth. And you know, this horse actually had to work over the training track over at, at Saratoga. So Rob was probably trying to get him in there and, and see if he could run and brought him here to Belmont ready to roll today. And Johnny V gave this horse a perfect ride out of a lemon drop kid. Mare Lemon Kiss. <laughs> Owned by Lawrence Roman. And $9.60 to close out this card here. Uh, light pick four. We had pretty formful final five races yeah. here. I want to say the pick five comes back right around. There it is, 201. The Empire got to carry over 139 into a giant card tomorrow. Um, obviously, eight races today. Tomorrow, 11 with the, our feature race being the Pebbles which we're going to talk about more in a moment. First things first, wrap up the nightcap. Let's go downstairs to Acacia. Greg, thank you. I'm here with winning trainer Rob Atris and Inscom, the first star in your barn coming in from California. Given the fact that he had some races on the go back and, and graded stakes, did that give you a little bit more confidence coming into today? I, I, I honestly, I thought we were definitely getting some class relief and um, he came in in tremendous shape. He's trained good since the get-go, since we got him here and um, I was expecting him to run really well. What did you learn about him since he first came into your barn gearing up for this first race? Um, you know, it wasn't so much what I learned about him. It's just I, I just thought he was a good horse. I thought maybe he had raced over his head a little bit and maybe he just needed a little bit of class relief to, to kind of get him you know, over that hump and, and maybe um, finish a little better. He finished up better today for sure, and he had a great ride by John Velasquez as they were turning for home. What were your, your thoughts as he seemed to be in the right position? Yeah, no, I thought everything unfolded absolutely perfectly, which doesn't always happen, as we know. And uh, with, you know, with Johnny V on the horse, I just like, I you know, I was just happy to have him on the horse in the first place. And, um, you know, in the position we were in and turning for home, I, I, I was very confident. Rob, thanks so much. Congratulations. Thank you, Acacia. And in scum first start for the Atris Barn, makes it a winning one in the nice ride in the nightcap by John Velasquez, guys. This horse has just been facing light years better than mm -hmm. anyone in this group. Yeah, and just found the right group. Like, we talk about this more times than not. It's all about placing. And here's a horse that was probably came over to here, and, and the owner said, you know, place this horse aggressively. Rob, you got to give Rob credit, have the horse ready. Um, and as of right now, there was no claim, so he'll probably keep him for his next start. So there it is. That uh, If you put that together in the late pick five, you come back with $201 and a quarter. By the yeah. way, if, if you... Candy Graham from Mongo went off as your favorite. If you happen to use a horse that was scratched at the gate, you went to a dollar ticket. Um, and that was, excuse me, hold on, let me go back real quick. I'm gonna say the uh, six, in the sixth race real quick. The two, the first time Scott or Microscope, that was getting played. Don't forget, you might have a dollar ticket instead of 50 cent ticket. Thank you for that, Polly. You're welcome. Which I have, that I just remind myself. Biggest betting pools in the world, are they're now available on Naira Bets. Hong what? Kong Racing has arrived, bringing you live racing from Sha Tin and Happy Valley Racecourse. Last season, the average win pool in Hong Kong. Do you want to take a guess? No, I, Do I you already, want to take a guess? I, no, listen, I know this already. Okay. They handle more on a daily than we handle on Kentucky Derby Day. Twenty-seven million dollars. It's crazy the how average much they handle. Pool. It's actually great pools to get into. Average win payout was ninety dollars. What? Wednesdays earn twenty times points on all bets from Hong Kong. Visit NairaBets.com for details. That racetrack is unbelievable, and maybe when we get some Hong Kong racing, we can get Acacia Courtney to talk about her. She's been there. Shot in. Okay. Uh, coming up on Saturday, feature race is the tenth. It is the Pebbles. At a mile on turf, three-year-old fillies. And Chad Brown sending out a pair of three-year-old fillies in blowout, seek and destroy. They went head-to-head -head in the wild applause, and it was blowout who came out on top. Yeah, listen, if it's turf and it's a stakes race on a Saturday in New York, Chad Brown's going to have a couple runners in here. And, and blowout um, has gotten the better of seek and destroy. One time took a field, not gate to wire, but just a tiny bit off the pace. Now, seek and destroy... New running style last time in, in the Ontario Cotillion got taken off the pace by Louis Contreras, but before it's been a speed horse, and I'm wondering which horse has gotten better. Has Seek and Destroy gotten better from this start, um, or who would you play tomorrow between Blowout and Seek and Destroy? And it's it's going to be very interesting who gets played. Yes, Blowout, she loves to go to the front. She tried to go gate to wire in that Lake Placid, yeah. got beat a neck in that dead heat between, uh, between uh, Varenka and Regal Glory. Yeah. John Velasquez will hop aboard for the very first time. Meanwhile...
You have a filly coming off a win, sprinting on turf last time out. She's not been as effective going longer. Long, what do you yeah. think about her at a mile on turf? Well, it's going to be tough. She might have to take this field gate to wires, which means blowout will let her go. But the inside filly's got a ton of pace, too. So I just don't know how she's going to be able to handle it. But you're right. She's an off-the-pace sprinter, and this was a great run. I don't know how the heck she got up on the way, way um, outside with Joel Rosario. She was leaning in towards the end, but he was so strong. Now, Joel obviously going to be up in Canada tomorrow, riding on that big day, and Dylan Davis will pick up the mount. But I'm with you. going to be a really tough task for Eye in the Sky to get the job done tomorrow. Meanwhile, on the rail, Karen McLaughlin with a three-year-old filly who... She got through her first allowance condition last start. She, she got away with very easy fractions yeah. on the front end. She's going to have pressure, I would think, up front. She's not going to get to go 25 and change. Well, it took her seven starts to break her maiden, Greg, to begin with. Six starts, okay? And then she finally broke through with a win last time out. Um, they tried her at longer distances, and then the one-turn mile of 16th help. But you're right. She went very, very slow. She finished up nice. Joe Bravo will take them out. She's not going to be able to get away with those kind of fractures at all. She's going to have to come from off the pace, which she has not done before. But maybe at a flat mile, she can, considering she's ran at a mile and a 16th mile and three 16th. She's run around some longer distances. Christophe Clement got a pair of three-year-old fillies there as well. Feel glorious. East making her state's U.S. debut. She ran in the uh, pre-Rothschild yes. group one against Lawrence last time. You just show up against that runner. That will take some attention. Well, here's a horse that at age two was second to newspaper of record in 2018 in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf with Jamie Spencer aboard and then ran in a grade one with Ryan Moore, a daughter of Frankel. And everybody's going to see a daughter of Frankel. She is going to get bet. And by the way, look to riding her. Manny Franco coming off a five win day to day. She's got some time for numbers. She would actually want it to be a little bit, I mean, a little bit uh, less firm than it has been of late, but. I would think if she breaks, she's going to be a handful tomorrow. We're going to have that for you live and all of this as well. We are loaded this weekend with stakes action from Belmont Park. Do you have a Brinks truck to play all these races? You feel like, well, I feel like you think you're going to win a lot of money tomorrow. No, I just think you need a Brinks truck to play <laughs> all these races. I'm going to try to get my action down on all of them, but look at all those stakes. I think the, your, your goal should be to try to make a wager on every single one of them. That's the key, betting strategy, because there's so many ways to go. Usually Where are you going to allocate usually your money? Usually it's quality over quantity. I'm suggesting tomorrow, tomorrow just a lot of quantity. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is quality all day long and quantity. Uh, Pocahontas, grade two for two-year-old fillies. Morning Gold, Kenny McPeak, will make her dirt debut. She's had two starts on turf, and we saw her win really impressively, going away gate to wire at a mile and a 16th, last time out, the Donner Morning Line, Jose Ortiz gets the return call. Tough call, right? Um, also, I always, I, I say this all the time, you know, Kenny's the kind of guy that he debuts his horses or runs them a lot without Lasix, and now he's gonna put Lasix into this filly on the dirt. Um, and she obviously been training well over it or he wouldn't be trying this spot. Meanwhile, British Idiom, this will be start number two, one in the debut as a seven to two favorite for Brad Cox. She's a daughter of flashback. Another horse that won first time out and is getting Lasix again. One without Lasix. I thought she was very, very good. I like the way she grinded away and she might love the mile in a 16. Now, the two turn mile in 16, just the way she runs. I like the way she's reaching out there towards the end of the race. Of course, Tom Amos, he won this race last year with Serengeti Empress. She would go on to win the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah. He's got a long shot chance. He's got his glory he's going to send out. Yeah, his glory will be in the inside horse. That's going to probably be showing speed with Jimmy Graham aboard, one of the, in Tom's uh, main riders in there. Big long shot, but you never know. You can't leave Tom Amos out. We will see you on Saturday. Stakes action in... Dates to the Breeders' Cup on the line from Woodbine, Churchill Downs, and we have the Pebbles here from Belmont Park. It was J.C. Shooting Star, seven-year-old mare, proving she's got plenty left in the tank and a five-win day for that young man, Manny Franco. What a Friday the 13th he had. We will see you on Saturday afternoon, 2.30 Eastern on Fox Sports 2.